Gentlemen, how are we doing? Hi, Chris. Yeah, good. You Chris. all right? Yeah, good. Good, good. For you uh, 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 not Patreons, uh, he's fat now, by the way, right? <laughs> he's fat. The little boy one is now fat. <laughs> Been, you've uh, been here an hour and that's all he's Yeah, we've just done a Patreon about. intro and you've just berated me for... Yeah, but some people might not be on, we're obviously not on Patreon, so he's fat. I'm By the way, fat. while it's on my brain, we get a lot of messages, don't we? A lot, and a lot of them are piss takes, like, oh, just commenting on how the episode is. But some are very thought-provoking. Serious question. If you three had to fight each other, who would walk out of the room? And second question to Parky and Brownie, if you two were to fight each other and could bring a mate to help from teams you've played in, who are you bringing? Ooh. He's out the room early. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you want to stay? Yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the ankles. I, I've fight got, to the death. I've got a small window. A small? If I can knock you to, you're to in 30 seconds, that's it. But oh, after that, I'm fatigued. Yeah. You, yeah. You've just I got, think you'd let me and him go at it. Yeah. Pick Wait, up the pieces. Stay out the way. Wait till fatigue sets in. Pick and up then, the pieces. If you're left, I'm just like circling room. Tire him out. It's tiring, you know, wrestling. Have you ever wrestled? No, not really. It's really tiring. You're out of breath quick. If, if you, you get get, on the, get one on the end of my nose, yeah, eyes will water. I'm off. <laughs> what about lads that you played with? Who's the hardest player you played with? What for fighting? I think I might take Liam Lawrence. You know, Liam, Liam Lawrence chuck a right hook on John Eustace, the, the Birmingham manager, and and the sound were phenomenal. So I think I think I think I'll take Lenny. Yeah, what about Andy you? Griffin. You taking Griff? Because oh. if he's losing, he'll just do he'll just shit on you or something. <laughs> <laughs> he'll to just be, turn to really be fair, dirty. That, that, that would affect me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not going to be in your hands, that's, isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's not going to really really cause me any distress. <laughs> not that I like getting shit on, obviously, but yeah, I think I think Lenny. Who would you want in your team? If, if there was a, a fight, oh, oh, we've had on the, oh, we've had on the podcast. No, me and him first. Oh, what? Me or him on your team? Mm. I think endurance. Or... Yeah, I think you're coming with me. I'm not butter beans. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> butter beans. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Puffing and panting after five. Feeling before he lost his timber. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've got a small window. If I can yeah. get my work done early, I, I'm fucking good to go. Don't let it go stale. Yeah. What about guests we've had on? Hardest guest? I think you've just used a phrase from somebody in... Paddy? Paddy Lacey. No, I'm having Mick Hartford. Yeah. Bawley. Bawley. Yeah. Oh, this fella today. <clears throat> Old school, Bill Nicholas on the cobbles. Peter Swan. I reckon Swan is right could, up there. I reckon Swan could chuck a right hook. Yeah, we've got, we've got a disclaimer for this week's episode because obviously it's, there's a bit of chaos going on in the room. <laughs> Good old Zeus. Swan, Swan, Swan invited us to his office, didn't he? Yeah. Um, he does uh, He does that, uh, home care, doesn't he, for, for uh, older... It's a family-run thing, isn't it? Yeah. And it, um, he... Um, he fetches his dog to work. Yeah, basically. it would bring your dog to work there. And when we... Oh, shit. And it were a bloody big dog. When we said dog... We're talking more bear, aren't we? <laughs> like Turner and Ooch. I reckon it could easily go around in a Suez circus, couldn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> it was before it when he went, he'll be all right in here with us, won't he? It just went silent. <laughs> he needed his own chair. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he'll be all right in here, just won't it? It was fucking massive. <laughs> and it was drooling everywhere. I reckon there must have been 12 stone a dog. Easy. <laughs> The amount of saliva, man. Zeus. The man. gathering round here. Oh, aye. Yeah. Jesus. It was one of them which they were, they were stringy as well. <laughs> you don't want it on your clothing, do you? No. I don't like I'm, I'm, I'm Sliver's the one for me, you know. I don't like slaver. You know what I mean? What, but, but I don't like human slaver. No, I don't, I, like, I don't like slaver <laughs> at all. Just in general. Just in general, man, I just don't like slaver. It's thicker and all, and it? it's got a bit It's of a bit semen in it. it. Yeah. Yeah, after five or six. Is it salty clear? as well? Salty. Oh, it tastes salty, aye. But <laughs> it, wore, uh, it, it took a bit of a shine to me, didn't it? <laughs> he took a bit of a shine to you because you kept giving him attention. I, I bad, like dogs, don't I? Don't I? I'm not leading them on as he was like stroking his neck. No, what I was doing, well, you'll see on video when you watch it, I was trying to hold him down forcefully without being forceful. Well, I was tickling his ears. And basically, in fact, fuck it, I'm taking Zeus in me. You know, for the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Zeus is coming in with me. <laughs> Uh, so I would tell him, like, just keep him on floor, and then next thing he'd be fucking latched on my face. 
I, my last thought I've been shagging. <laughs> fucking scratches all over my neck and everything. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a, there's lovely a, dog, mind. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, lovely. Belt that. Um, in the, in the, unless you're taking any Christmas presents in the room, with you? Because uh, there's a bit that we need to explain. Because oh, I don't think on the audio, uh, basically, he ate me out. <laughs> <laughs> we're, rec- we're recording. We're recording. And he just heard this. Hey, Ob, what's he doing? And Zeus is under the table eating his brand new hat for Christmas. <laughs> he was halfway through a story as well, Swanny. You were halfway through my hat. Hey, time I'd seen hey, him. Hey, Ob. <laughs> And then about 20, 30 minutes later, we hear this. And he's got your tub of snooze and he's chewing that fucking under the table. So, so yeah, just, just a bit of context. Of Swanny just pissed his laughing, weren't he? The chaos that uh, ensues during this episode. Great story about Robbie Williams on here, by the way. There's some unbelievable stories in here. Yeah. It's, it, could, were you aware of it, Swanny, before? Not I'm, really, no. Like, you heard, like... I play Warnock, golf. some some alternative uh, Warnock stuff views. Yeah, Plymouth, Plymouth, Plymouth. I think that's the worst. You know, when we've had lads on who've had bad times somewhere. That yeah. is the worst I've seen. I've heard about. Yeah, it was his bad. Yeah. spell at Plymouth is the worst. Because mm. it worked. Full stop. It was in the dressing room and all, weren't it? Like at least if. I had a shotgun at Blackburn, but at least I got an all right with the lads. Mm. Yeah. Imagine you, you coming thought, in. You thought so. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cunt, but... <laughs> not speak to, not, not speak to you now. <laughs> you come in from training, imagine just everyone just ignoring you. Yeah. Mad that, it's isn't it? nice, is it? i tell you what, this, this uh, block of episodes as well, we've had uh, a lot of ghosts and ghouls. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we had... Um, Jackie. Jackie McNamara said he oh, had to yeah. get a medium in at York City. And then we've got another one this week. Another two. Another ghost. Yeah, loads of them, isn't there? <laughs> Riddled with we've, never, like, we've never had any before, <laughs> have we? <laughs> yeah. well, just, I'm just expecting Slimer to come through these curtains <laughs> we've here. We've never had any before, uh, have we? We've had two in a couple of weeks. Come on, Casper. Fucking <laughs> 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 hell. Uh, Did you see that comment it about... Inundated with him. Um, I don't know if he just released a new episode, but somebody had put, I'm half expecting this guy to be on here today. And it was a picture of Keith Lard. Oh, the, oh after, she, I hope she went a bit mad with that, you know. Did what, she? What, the, the wanker? Yeah, she's done. Well, I'm not surprised. You, didn't, you said she weren't good looking. <laughs> Who went mad? <laughs> Katie? Or? Yeah. She was like, I said, oh, the wanking dog off came up in intro. She went, she didn't, did it? <laughs> yeah. She said, I don't want to see it. Tell him not to put it on Facebook, so I don't want to see that. <laughs> Plural. <laughs> don't want to see it. <laughs> so I don't want to watch that. We've not uploaded a video. I don't want it. Uh, and then two. <laughs> by the way, it is. By the way, dog wanging for dummies. <laughs> by the way, it is quite. Uh, oh dear. There's quite a lot of friction with the two thimbles. By the way, let me tell you. <laughs> not thirty seconds off my PB. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. PB. laughs> so yeah, she oh, weren't, she weren't happy. We're not sure if the if anybody wants to buy a shit soap puppy, just let us know. Yeah. By the way, because I think we turned a few around, you know, with the with the intros, the, with, the, with the dog wanking. Got a few on board. So a lot of people seem to enjoy it. It's not not good, really, is it? Who <laughs> oh. oh, fucking listen to these things? <laughs> First time I've heard you snort. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. <laughs> We've got enough of that. Like when Zeus comes in. Like you're eating an apple. <laughs> uh, we used to talk about football in the uh, intros. Now it's just, just dog banking and ghost. <laughs> it's gone, isn't it? It's gone. We also had a message about uh, VPN saying, every time we mention it, I just look like a rabbit at headlights. As but, if, yeah, you've been busted, haven't you? As if people think that I don't know what I'm doing with VPN. And oh, that. you do, though. I've seen you using it. It's almost slanderous, Yeah, some of the comments. Hurtful. Because I, uh, I was watching in, in Qatar, I was watching Cora and that, weren't I? Yeah. Tipping point. I, I think we're saying you, you don't watch football, but we know that oh, already. Yeah, 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 watch watch football. Football, oh, you watch all good, all good oh. series, though, don't you? Yeah. Well, well, Neighbours, Omnibus. No VPN is the best VPN service in the business, and you can get a heavy, heavy discount just by following the link in the description or going to www.novpn.com/slash kosh, and you get that discount. And 
you know, you can watch programs that are uh, abroad. Streaming services. All these streaming Stream. services, you can get them cheap. You know all this about the, the, the security and the... Just bank. tell yeah. us anyway, Chris. Yeah, well, you know, your, your bank details, your addresses, your passwords. You don't want people getting the, the mucky mitts on him, do you? All these uh, hackers. Mm. Fraudsters. They can't get in with no VPN. So you can bank your location to anywhere in the world and get them cheaper streaming services. It's amazing, really, isn't it? You it know, is. when you think about Bloody it, it's mind blowing for somebody as technically deficient as me. And you're managing. It's and easy, really, it, isn't yeah. it? All no. you've got to do, follow the link in the description or go to www.nordvpn.com slash kosh and get that discount. Heavy, heavy discount. Heavy's featured a lot today, yeah. aren't Yeah. Is the discount as heavy as me? <laughs> this count as heavy as you are. Let's <laughs> oh, get him in. That's Zeus. Come on, Zeus. Another one of Robbie's mates, John. Yeah, but, but before we get started, if anybody can hear like a. <laughs> It's not me. John's got a bag of crisps. It's, it's, yeah. it's not me. We've got a fucking. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a fucking twelve stone round under the table here. <laughs> What's the jumper on? And it's, got, it's got a bone. What's he called? The, I hope it's the bone Zeus. Zeus. He looks like a Zeus. Oh, Jesus that, Christ! <laughs> we'll have to send you dry cleaning bills, Swanny. No problem. I look like I've been in a bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think you could afford one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think this is classed as one of Robbie's proper friends. Yeah, I think we're me and him you're, are just you're acquaintances. You're a bit of a clinger on. Hang, yeah, hanger on. <laughs> but you've getting to know him personally, haven't you? I have done over the over the three years at Port Vale, definitely. Three nightmare years with him, babysitting him, fun, laughter, tears at times. Um, used to look after my boy when we used to go out. So I used to babysit George, my son, when we used to go out. Um, but some funny stories, some that I thought I can't even think of telling again because I'm just hoping they'd never happened in my dreams, but they did. <laughs> um, but we had a funny one once where we'd been out probably a week before. Then on a night out, I remember his mum saying, well, how much money are you taking out? So I said, I'm 100 quid just in case we end up in casino. And Rob said to me, well, you owe me 40 quid from last week. So, so I take 60 out and you give me the 40, we'll have 100 pound each, we'll be fine. Yeah, no problem. He says, but I need my card. So his mum gave me a card, said, and to stop some money on the way through. So driving through a little place called Stone down in Staffordshire. So I got out, gone to the hole in the wall, got me some money out, got my money out. He says, can you get me 40 quid and a balance? So I went, yep. Yeah. So got his money in, balance, got his money, got back in the car, give him his balance of his money. And as we're driving off, he looks at me, he says, so he says, um, what does it mean? 647DR. I says, what? He said, 647DR. I said, that tells you you're overdrawn, in my eyes. He went, fucking hell, this is, I've told you, I said, my management said, they're not looking after me, right? I said, Rob, the problem what you have, you want to be a footballer like me? He went, yeah, this has never happened for you. I said, um, yeah, have a look at mine. He's going, fucking hell. How well are you doing for yourself? I went, that's fucking yours, you silly cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Just the fact that he was oblivious that he might he uh, might yeah. be it's it's not not that he's drawn. It shows them that the, probably them the top end don't know what's going on. But when I asked for the <laughs> asked for the fucking the balance, the machine started screaming it's like don't like no, no, zeros <laughs> to get it out. <laughs> I can't Where would you have been in it career wise then? That that's post take that is that like entertaining that take kind that, of yeah I met him first at a pre season game against Newcastle under Lyme I think it was played and he was, I just finished played half a game like you do pre season I'd gone to the bar which you do supporting your team um, sat at a bar and he was sitting behind us and someone comes introduced to us and then from then on we just hit it off like you say you've have you not you've met him but you spoke to him he's a diamond of a lad people have got all perceptions of him who he is what he's done but he wants to be one of us. He wants to be down to earth. The fun you used to have with him, jokes he used to go out and start his singing in pub. And darts, I think he even played in his darts darts league one one night when we took him out. But there's just one thing after another. And wherever he went, there was always something happening. Yeah, but as a as a 
as a kid, a lovely kid. If you're wondering why there was a spare seat, <laughs> here we go. That's exactly why. <laughs> Zeus is in the building. <laughs> Zeus is in the building. I might, have, <laughs> I might have done Zeus a disturbance. He's 14 stone, to be fair, not 12. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, Bez there, John Beresford. You played with him from a young age. Never played with Bez. No, we ended up, I met Bez um, through Rehabilitation Centre. I don't know if you ever come across that down in Staffordshire. We've spent <laughs> Does he get horny, Zeus? <laughs> How horny is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting aroused. I can see from here. Huh? If he lick, if he lick <laughs> Zeus <ears>. is aroused. <laughs> if he licks your ears, give him a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I've known, known Bez since we're like under nine to tens, playing against some Sheffield boys and Leeds boys. So that's what happened from then on. We always seemed to play against each other. He was a centre half at the time. I was centre forward. So that's how I met them. We went to his rehabilitation centre. Then we just from then on we just kept in touch for well, just until today. Anybody think? Would anybody just tune in and think you've lost a bit of timber? There's no need for that. Uh, Fucking, no, no, no need at all. You were, were you good mates, <laughs> aren't you? They'll lift his heart. It's getting me, man. It's X rated, isn't it? Man? That's why it's under the cross because it's under the table. Put it away, man. It's an embarrassing me, that thing, Albert. <laughs> uh, you were good mates with Don Goodman, though, were you yeah. growing up playing? Growing up, yeah. Where we are now, where you've come in, the football field there, there was. Um, my mum and dad set up, my mum set up because she had the news agents. They set up a football team to get us off the streets. And we played over there. So the, me and Don Goodman played. And a lad called Jimmy Irving, who went on to play for Ulkea and Matey and Johnson, the best mate, he went on to play for Unslit. So out of the 11 players in that team there from around here, four of them became professional sportsmen, which is it's strange, hard to believe, but that's what happened. But Don used to be. My dad's paper boy, but I won't say it was probably the best footballer at that time, to be fair. Because, like I say, we'd, we'd sometimes turn up with 10 men, and Don's best position at that time was the sub. <laughs> so, even with 10? Still, even with 10 men. <laughs> we'll play with nine. He had it behind the ring goal. <laughs> he stood on the bench. He did all right for his son. He did all right for his son, and what a diamond of a lad he is. How did you end up at Leeds then? Um, again, it's just through like anybody else when the, you're growing up through the youth. I signed when I was 14 as a, it's like apprentice, not apprenticeships, is it? It's schoolboy forms. So I signed <laughs> schoolboy forms at 14. Um, we had a right youth team when we got to 16. Like in our youth team, probably there was like, we had Dennis Irwin, who went to play at Man United. There were Terry Field and left back. John Scales, centre half, went on to play. Won the FA Cup with Wimbledon. Midfield, we have Dave Batty, Gary Speed, um, Chez, he was just probably leaving us, Scott Sellers, Tommy Wright. So the youth team had some right quality, and that was like Eddie Grace kids that he brought, uh, Billy Bremner's kids that he brought through. So, yeah, it, it was a great upbringing, to be fair, with them sort of players around us. They've all had top, top careers, yeah. haven't they? I know, we are thinking, where did I go wrong? <laughs> say it before were you, you were that, that sub? <laughs> I were doubled. <laughs> <laughs> was it Bramner that gave you your debut though? Yeah, did yeah. Um he gave me my debut, Eddie Gray. So at that time they were going through managers who were like they brought the old ex players in. They had Alan Clark, Eddie Gray, then Billy Bremner. Um Billy that gave us his debut. And I think I blame Billy for my drinking to be fair, because before every game he'd stand at the door with a bottle of whiskey. So like, oh the players were going out just having this nip of whiskey, just take the edge off. And I'm like a young kid, nineteen twenty, I thought. Oh, I like the taste of that, so I'd go back at Q again. And have a <laughs> Get out there, see how you feel. But yeah, they used to look down there with whiskey. But as a manager, man to man manager, um, get the best out of players. He was brilliant. A tough upbringing <coughs> coming through Leeds with a with a senior pros. Um, I wouldn't say a tough upbringing. Um, you look at some of the players that brought me. I was like Norm Nutter used to get me out on afternoons, show me how to tackle. Thank you. Cost me a fortune down the line. Um, <laughs> when you say show you how to tackle, is it dark arts? Yeah, to dark tackle? arts. How to get away with it. Yeah. And then also, then I had Kenny Burns. Remember Kenny Burns? Mm. Kenny Burns, Peter Barnes. These players, like I said, the proper old school coming to the end of the career, but you could learn so much Passing off them. Passing on the knowledge. Yeah, there was quality to learn from them sort of players that played at the top level. And people say to me, 
was it a shock when you made your debut and things like that? I'll say, not really, no, because in my head, as a kid, when I left school, I had the job to go to Leeds when I was 14. <laughs> then at 16, I left school. So I thought that was my next step. Then when I got to 17, I signed my first professional contract, which in my head wasn't a shock because that's where I'm aiming for. And then your chance comes to make your debut. So it wasn't a shock So I'd, I'd worked to get there in my head. That's where I was going to go. So people say, oh, you're lucky and this and that. Yeah, I probably want the best, but I've worked hard on what I, what I had to get to where I've got, where a lot of people would love to do that. And like I say, I'm privileged to do what I've done in my career. I, I knew my standards, I knew my level, I knew I was never going to be a top, play top le um, league. But what I, I knew in my head what I wanted to do in my life is give it the best and enjoy myself. And you'll probably find out today with some of the stories, that's what I have done. If I'd probably put more time into my football than enjoy myself, I might have got to the top level. <laughs> well, like fucking two peas in a pod spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but we enjoyed it exactly this is, this is the main thing Gary Speed your boot boy Gary Speed was my boot boy yeah um, again diamond of a kid and I wrote a book a few years back and asked him to put a bit in it um, and now when I've looked back after we've lost Gary there's a, a bit a couple of lines in there which I look back and I, that, sting, that stand out to me and he says um, when, when I came to Leeds Swanee put his arm around me and protected me and it brought a lump to me throat. Still thinking about it now, thinking, what did he mean by protecting him? What did he mean by looking after him? And it just plays over in my mind now, thinking, what's happened? Mm. It might be nothing, but it's just how I read into yeah. it. Yeah, but you don't realise the influence. That nah, and what a lovely lad, and he kept saying, I won't let him do my boots because he was even younger than me. He was a better player than me, and I'd go and stand in the boot room and would do it each other. I'd do my boots, and I'd help him do his. And we sit, and he kept saying, "When do you think I'll get my chance? When do you think I'll get my chance?" And I just remember saying one day, "Look, when you get your chance, you'll take it, and you'll stay in the team for as long as you want." And then his record, the stats go on to show that he won a, you know, the most appearances in top league. Didn't yeah, it? yeah. So yeah, lovely lad. I like say, it's so sad to see what's happened, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Some like you've set up at Leeds, then the players that come through and that. Yeah. Very much so. So were you, you know, like in your youth team, were you like good? If you know what I mean, were you like one of the best? No, not in my, in me as a me as a player. No, not when you've like just reeled them sort of players off. I was like hanging in there. So, it, and it's strange because he's like, I'm a centre half. I'm a centre forward. As a kid growing up, I signed at Leeds as a centre forward, but I made probably more three, four hundred appearances as a centre half. And it was things Eddie Gray that put me at the back. He fancied me as a centre half where. Stan Turner, he liked him as a striker. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What? <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting that off him. I've been fucking... I've been Zeus. You might as well have it now. Take it off with him. <laughs> <laughs> and don't swallow it a bit. Christmas present. Oi. Hold up. <laughs> Time out. Come here, bigger lad, and take it, mate. You'll uh, it's still tuned. <laughs> 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 I knew it was a different material when he was chewing out. I just hear it. I thought, that's not born, that. Oi, come here. <laughs> Did Rose get you that? <laughs> He's been Zeus. I feel like a wank anyway. You <laughs> 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 can't have that bigger. Uh, not good for you. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Should we get him out? Do you want him out? <laughs> He's provided a lot of entertainment. <laughs> He doesn't normally chew stuff. <laughs> Apart from his bone. Well, if he licks your ears, he's going to get hard on. <laughs> if he licks you, you were being serious <laughs> when you said that. That's a lies. If he licks your ears, he's going to get it hard on. <laughs> oh, Crayola's out. I've got lippy out. I'll take it out of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's new, that. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Did he used to do uh, crown ring up bowling? 
Billy Bremner. Billy Bremner, yeah. Yeah, on a Friday. Friday's little balls, like we used to, before games on away trips, you used to partner up or put your money in, five or whatever you, and then oh, one day he had, a, he had a, a mate called Herbie, who was a jeweller, and he had a false eye. So Ian Snodding and Bremner were like that. So Herbie come down and he'd like, he couldn't play because he'd, he'd lost his, his glass eye. But unknown to them, the gaffer would give it to Snod and they use it as a jack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, false eye down. So he, when he's looking for his eye, it's like everybody's trying to run the ball. You know? <laughs> yeah. So on away cruel. trips, he'd just find like a random bowling club. Wherever you were? No. Is that what you mean? No, he'd take their own balls like carpet balls, or little smaller ones, and wherever you were having something to eat, they'd find a room big enough to roll it, 20 yards or something. Did you, how did the Nicky's black... Just not going to his room, drop a drop. It's easy to get in someone's room, isn't it? Just nicked his eye. Oh, so he just took it out to sleep? Yeah. Put it outside? I just robbed it. You can use it as a jack. <laughs> Oh, bastard. <laughs> Sometimes they're thrown quite hard, don't they? Could have smashed yeah. you hit it. And I remember one at game, before four, one at big games. It might have been one at playoff games. Billy's coming, she's right, we've got team talk here. Herbie's going to give you team talk. And this is the jeweller giving us a team talk before, I think it might have been one at playoffs. Actually stood there and he was a really emotional bloke anyway. And the passion he showed getting over to the players and which it meant to him and all the fans and black. It was mint. It worked. You know what I mean? He was did absolutely... the work, did the job. Yeah, we got beat four 0 <laughs> <laughs> To no. be fair, they were only crying out to one eye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the pass was nothing to do with his team talk. It was meant it was, but it did well. Did Bill to come out of that? <laughs> <laughs> was that his way of just relaxing the lads? You went about yeah. man management and stuff. I think that's where his revy days come into it. That's what they must have used to have done. Things like that. so he brought a lot of that to us. Which to have him as a manager, he like say. His man-to-man management was skills yeah. are brilliant. Because I think Don Revy did that, played played yeah, Green Bowls. Yeah, and, and all things yeah, like that. Yeah, he brought it in as, a, like, carrying on the mantra. Did you get on with Chez? Chez, yeah. Strange, stranger Chez. Cards close to his chest. Nice bloke. I'll tell you a story about Chez before, just before I got married. He was one of them where mum and dads won't let you move in together. Old school was my parents and future wife's parents, so I bought this house in the middle of Stag Do. About seven of us gone around Wakefield. I said to Chez, stay ours if you want. I said, yeah, no problem. But you've got to remember, no one's been in this house, it's immaculate. So fine, I said, I've only got one bed, but you can sleep on the sofa downstairs. Yeah, it's fine. So come on, a few beers, kebab, back home, go to bed, come down in the morning, come on, Chez, training, looked in the front room, a massive fucking turd right in the middle of the fucking carpet. She has what I was checking, what the fuck you done? So like, fucking move in on Saturday and you fucking shit him went, Fuck off, it's not fucking me. How can you fucking say it's me? I says, Well, it's only me and you now. She says, You fucking dog, she fucking dog shit it. So she says, I don't have a fucking dog. <laughs> <laughs> no excuse for a dog. And I'm not gonna come from upstairs and downstairs to have a shit in your own carpet. <laughs> You have to blame. Oh, carpet. Carpet. It's oh. a clean carpet. If I'm going to shit in any carpet, it's my bedroom carpet. I'm not coming downstairs <laughs> exactly. to do it. And still to this day, it won't them. So we're moving in, like I say, on the Saturday. So I had to get a rug. And this is not like rugs. Not a carpet. Not a carpet cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> a rug. Clean. <laughs> I didn't just leave shit there. No. Why would you get a carpet cleaner? <laughs> so I tried to clean up, but two blokes trying to clean the stain up is not going to work, is it? So... We've got a rug just to cover the stain over to get away with it for a couple of weeks at least anyway, and then until she saw it and went berserk and I had to tell her who it was, but he still had him and they want him. I can imagine, depending on the consistency, you, you might be just smearing it in a bigger patch. So then you're better off cl- trying to clean it later once it's settled. Let it dry. You mean put it dry on, on it? <laughs> get it dry, get it out and pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet it weren't as big as your fucking shite Zeus, was it? <laughs> <laughs> it will be in morning. <laughs> Come out with an hat on. <laughs> Did you, uh, you know, he said you speak highly of Bremner. Was it just chalk and cheese with Wilkinson? With me and Wilkinson, yeah. Or oh, just m- management styles, getting well, the best out in. of you and he what have you. He came in and I say he went on to do big things, didn't he, at Leeds, which was brilliant. But at the time when he came in, it was like, it was way ahead of what's going on, really, because he used to give, like, protein tablets out and his training methods are all different. And But for me, what happened was Eddie Gray had gone to Hull 
and I loved Eddie Gray. So I wanted to go. Johnny, you're leading him on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just Zeus with a direction. I'm like fucking Keith Lard. <laughs> Sorry, Swanee. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, so it was way advanced, I thought. And then, but when Eddie went to Hull, and obviously he mentioned, would you like to come and play for me at Hull? I'm like, well, yeah, I'd love to. So the opportunity came where it was transfer deadline day and Wilkinson pulls me in. But before that, before he pulled me in, the week before, I hadn't been playing for Leeds. But I, I used to run a team called Rothwell Town just up the road. So the lad said, why do you come and play for us? 20-year-old, like, got three-year contact, Lee, as well. Playing a false name. So I went, yeah. So I played this fucking Rothwell Town, 1-1-0, one, one, penalty. I'll take it. One of many best kid at school. I'll take it. Take it, 1-1-0. One, one, Loved it. Following week, it threw me back. It threw me in randomly against Knox Forest in Cup. So one week I'm playing Rothwell Town up on field. Next week I'm playing that not Forest Ground. Two weeks after that, transfer deadline comes, and it's like <laughs> Rothwell have put a bit in. He says, um, <laughs> "Would you fancy coming over?" So whatever. I says, um, "Yeah, I'd love to." So uh, Wilkinson got me in. Well, get you sent over there then. He said, "They want you." I said, "Well, I had no agent though." He says, "Well, what do I ask for?" I think we're on like four hundred quid a week at, at Leeds at the time. He said, well, go and ask for like 500 quid, ask for 10 grand sign on fees, this, this, and this. So it, I've gone over, and it's like two o'clock, half two in the afternoon. So I went over, had a chat with Eddie. As I walked in, he said, look, this is all we can offer you. And they're paying 200 grand at the time, which to Hull at the time was a record signing. So back 36, 38 years, probably a, a bit of money. So it was a bit of money they were spending, but all they were going to give me were like a 50 quid rise and five grand a year sign on fees. And I thought, that don't fit right. Not from what? Wilkinson told me to ask for. So anyway, so I said, no, I can't sign for that. Let me think about it. So you ain't got time to think about it. So well, I'm not signing for that. So I went home and there were no mobiles at the time. So I got home and mum said, Wilkinson's been up phone for you. Or Mr. Wilkinson's been up phone. She says, you need to ring club straight away. So I run club. She says, um, what's happened? I said, well, I'm not signed. She said, well, you best get yourself down here now. And I only live at Topper Road. So I'm only seven minutes away from Ellen Road. So I've gone down to Ellen Road, walked in. As I walked in reception, Gordon Strachan sitting in reception. And I'm like, hi, Gordon. I says, um, Pete Swan, please to me. Not thinking it's transfer deadline day at all. What, what are you doing here? He says, um, I'm signing today. I went, oh, fucking brilliant. It's like being a Leeds lad. I thought, Gordon Strachan coming here. He says, um, what? He says, I'm only signing if you go to Hull. I said, well, I'm not off to Hull. He went, you probably are. I went, how do I get to Hull then? Because they haven't given me enough money. He went, and Gordon says, look, what are you do? You go in there. Ask them for 10 grand to fuck you off. I went, I can't do that. So he said, they're going to have to do it because, like I say, they're signing me today. So I've walked in. Wilkins says, right, what's happened? I said, well, they didn't give me the money I wanted. He said, but if, if you want me to go, you'll have to pay me some money to go. And they're like, what are you on about? And then there was a chairman, Loisa Silver in there. There was manager, Mick Ennigan. They're all walking around. I was sitting on this sofa. It's like, I won't say intimidating, but they're walking around trying to get Gordon to sign. So I went, well, Simple as I said, I said, how much do you want to go? I went, 10 grand. And I couldn't believe I'd said it. What around, we can't give you that, we'll give you five. I went, no, I want 10 grand. They settled on it and said, yeah, we'll give you. And out of that 10 grand, they took out my club suit money. They took out my track suit money, a fine 20 quid a year. So we'll send it in post to you. So the best thing for me, for Leeds, was me leaving Leeds because two years later, they won't go in Premier League or Old First Division. Yeah. If Strachan's in the building, you're holding all the cards there, I think, because they're not. Imagine going to Gordon Strachan and saying, "It, it can't happen." Mm. He's not. Gonna, they're not going to turn him away, are they? Well, that's what so whatever Gordon you ask for, quality for yeah. me. Yeah. End of the day, would you have even thought of that? Like, no, as a young I, I, I 20, 21? that it was transfer deadline day. In it, for instance, why is he at Ellen <clears> Road? Because he was massive, wasn't he? He's not massive. He's only that big, but he was <laughs> as a footballer. He was massive, and I thought I didn't cut on on that. But when they said it was get, the money they were getting for me, they were buying him. I thought, you did, like you said there, the cards are in my hands, really. I can guess what I want. Probably should have asked for more. Yeah, I'm asking for 20. I'm getting down to 15. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to leave? So if they said it, it, it wasn't going through, would you have been half happy with it? No, or did you I, want didn't, to play? I didn't like Wilkinson, how, how he was. Um, I'm an easygoing sort of person. But, you know, someone just niggles away at you. And I think the main pull was Eddie Gray. He was the main pull. 
And I always said if throughout my career, I signed for managers rather than clubs. I signed for people. Uh, so if they sold themselves to me, regardless what name was above the door, obviously it depends what league and level was that, I'd do that. I'd go with the manager. Big money then for Hull? 200 grand, yeah. Massive money. Um, I think week before it, they broke it with like, signing a lad called Ian McParland from Notts County. So the, the threw all at it, did all. And the first year, I think it was, got relegated. So. <laughs> 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 signed for Hull, signed for Leeds when I was 14, they got relegated. <laughs> signed for Hull, they got relegated. Went to Port Vale after a year, they got relegated. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, fuck this, I'm off miles away. I went to Plymouth and get these out of this league somehow. Fucking dinner. <laughs> got relegated. <laughs> So I start looking in the mirror thinking, fucking hell, it must be you. <laughs> it must be you. <laughs> so you think Gray signed you as a centre-half or centre-forward? Eddie Gray signed me centre-half, loved me as a centre-half. Because Billy Whitehurst was there, wasn't he? Yeah. Billy Whitehurst was there as well. Andy Payton, most selfish footballer ever come across. You get beat 7-1, he scores the one, you've let me down, you lads. Oh, I didn't give a shit. He scores goals, but you'd have him in your team every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's one of them. But like I say, after Eddie Gray came, um, they brought in a bloke called Colin Appleton. I think he lost something like eight out of 12 games. And then they brought Stan in, Stan Turner, for oh, my days. So what happened was, he was taking over on the weekend, on the Monday, but he turned up at the game on the Saturday, which he shouldn't be involved in. We were playing Bradford away, and there was, like I say, me and Billy and Andy Payton up front. 15 minutes into the game, Stan's come from the stand, come down. Next thing, referee's blunt whistle substitute. Looked across. You know, it's an early substitution. This one is you, you're off. I went, what? 15 fucking minutes in, not even had a touch, you know what I mean? So it goes off, I'm fucking fuming. First time I've met Stan. So I'm having, I'm having a go as I'm coming off. So I go into the dressing room at Bradford, went into the corner, went upstairs, went to the bar, which you do. Console yourself, two or three beers, half time he's getting it. Going to half time, shut the door, get out, see me on Monday. Don't want to speak to you. See you on Monday. So all that weekend, I spoke to a couple of lads and just got to know a bit of background of who he is and what he's like and what he don't like. He don't like dogs. I'm scared of dogs. So my thoughts on Monday morning, I'm taking my dog training. <laughs> <laughs> so I set off to training. At this time, you think that's big. I had this 12 stone Great Dane massive that stood up at his head was above me. So I took it training. Pulls in. Get him out, put him up lead. I walked in down the corridor and a real narrow corridors out of the proof uh, park. And managed his office with halfway down. So I got knocked on the door. Come in. Stand. Open the door, took lead off. Shut the door. Let's send dog in. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. I'm sitting there. I stood outside 30 seconds. I know what he's, exactly what he's gonna do. I know what he's like. And if he if he moves, I know what he's gonna do. <coughs> Left 30 seconds, put my head round. He's got him pinned up against the wall <laughs> and his head's above him. So his paws on his shoulders, his head's above him, behind the back of his desk. Like, same colour as the wall, drip white. And I went, whistled him off, come and sat next to him. You took the piss out of me on Saturday. I'm doing the same here. And he couldn't answer me, he couldn't talk. He was great. That's the first time I've seen him speechless. <laughs> well, then, like, let's just go back here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Stan's not even involved in the game. No, but he was taking over on the Monday. But he's come down after 15, dragged you. Yeah. Don't want to speak to you till the Monday. Yeah. You thought, I tell you what, make a good impression. I'm taking fucking great day, isn't it? <laughs> Did a background check first. Found <laughs> <In the background laughs> out you don't like, you don't like dogs. You might have liked dogs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> tickling dogs. <laughs> Jimmy and that, and I'll do that. <laughs> do you not think this could go drastically Terribly wrong? wrong. Yeah, but in my head, what what do they do? You got to the piss To sell you, you make some more money. In my head, do you think you half respected it though? Yeah, he signed me twice after that. How did you redeem that? He kept bringing his dog into training. <laughs> yeah. Am I playing? Am I playing Saturday gaffer? No. <laughs> You'd be seen uh, fucking uh, swinging the lead. <laughs> <You'll be seeing laughs> swinging the lead in training. Am I playing or not? <laughs> <laughs> but no, honest. After that. He told me the reasons why he did it. He didn't want this up top. He didn't want to do this. 
Then Billy went on to Sheffield United and he said, look, I want you to play up front with Andy Payton. And again, that's the year we got relegated. But me and Pates, between us, we scored more goals than West Ham that got promoted. So he just loved me as a striker. And then later down my career, I played six years then at different clubs as a centre-half. And then he took over at manager at Bury. And I was at Burnley and he rung me to say, look, I want you to come and play for me. But if you come playing for me, you're playing as a striker, not as a centre-half. But as a manager, <clears throat> he was brilliant. Absolute for me, he was because he knew how to get the best out of me. He knew what I had, what he had to do, and I'd run through brick walls. I'd have, in, I'd have injections for him and blah blah. blah. I'd do all to play for him, and I think he respected that. Four hundred games we played Middlesbrough away, and I'd gone for an header and flicked it ball on. Lads come caught me, split me eye, and straight away you felt warmth, don't you? So I'm laid down. What lads comes like? So I just don't move. So the, it, the, the corner there had flipped over. So physio comes on. But before the game, I'd had to have three injections in my heel. And the injection, the needle went in my heel, broke. So they had to slice them open to open it to get the needle out to go back in. So I was in agony with my foot anyway. So once my eye had done, I'm like a relief. I thought, oh, I'm just coming off. I'm coming off. With like 25 minutes to go. So I come off and laid in the in the treatment table. Doctor comes down, starts stitching it up. So I'm laid there. I'm just, I'm in agony. My body's in agony. My heel's killing me. Because you're running awkward, it's your groin, other side, so everything's aching. My head's pounding. And I'm laid there, so I was just glad I'm off. And then I heard the door open and some footprints, and I thought, I know what that is. I know what it is. And they come up and went, Have you finished, Doc? Put his arm under me, 20, 20, 20, give me another 20. So I'd like six stitches in, my heel's been throbbing, my groin's killing me. So I'm like, somehow, <laughs> run back on pitch to play the last 20 minutes for him. And I've come off, I couldn't see. It was like, I had gone all over, I come off, and then it made a point out of point to me, I want 11 of these on my team week in, week out. So I think it threw me back on to prove a point to the players that he can do it, we all can do it. So, But then, like I say, he signed me twice after that. It's mad, isn't it? He's actually, left, that actually left the game, by the way. I know. Just going into the dressing room. I'm just going to go and get Swanny to come back out. Yeah. Maybe that brutal and, and people still yeah. love him. Because I think it was Glenn Little, wasn't it? Was saying at the time when when you're in it, he was like, "This is awful. This is terrible." And he'd gone. I think he might have gone to Reading or something. He's like, "I miss Stan. I miss. <laughs> I miss being showered. I miss that thingy every day." Yeah. He used to run everything, from your food you had to the hotels to the bus. Everything he had, he was in charge of. All. Nobody would take it. Or he would be in charge of it all. Imagine being a centre half back then and seeing Swan and White Whitehurst. Up front, you're getting sent off, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, aye, early doers. Five, five minutes, early <laughs> doers. Might as well play against fucking Phil and Grant, aren't you? Hitting <laughs> <laughs> them Peggy up right wing instead of Peyton. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you didn't move over there, did you? Did you stay here when you played at Hull? Yeah, I stayed in Wakefield. So I just travelled M62. It's not a bad run, is it, to be fair? What was the drinking score? The social? Um, I used to come back home. I did it in 37 minutes once. What, were you in a fucking Chinook? <laughs> I, was in my, I was in the car that Leeds paid for. When I left, it was a Sierra two-litre sport. <laughs> Fast as fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Before we started this, he went, Great memory, memories. my memory's terrible. I can't remember anything. Yeah, remember you're, how to get. You're coming back to me. <laughs> I love it. I'm not, I'm not happy with <laughs> You must have done well. Because when they got relegated, was the four or five clubs after you? There was, yeah. I'd, um, that's say Eddie Gray then became my agent after that. Um, he went out of football, became my agent, and they'd rung us today to say, there's a um, couple of clubs, because all get relegated, and I wanted to stay at that level. And I thought I'd done okay. I think it was Sunderland. Well, it was, yeah, it was definitely Sunderland, because in the morning I've gone in to train, I said to Mrs. Look, I'm going for talks today with Sunderland. So I'll be so, up in, I'll be up there in 20 minutes. So, <laughs> put, the, put the tea on, I'll be, I'll be there and back in an hour. <laughs> so I said to Mrs. Start looking for houses up there. So gone to the training ground. They off we went. Eddie, Eddie picked us up and says, Oh, we're not off to Sunderland straight away. We've got to, because he's, he's managed with Viv Busby at the time, I think. He says, um, We're off to Port Vale. I said, From Port Vale, I've got to ring Sunderland, see what they've offered. And there was someone at West Prom. So I've got to speak to these when we had the deal from Port Vale. So I find, so then we went there. He, Eddie sorted the deal out. 
rung all these clubs. They kept marching it, marrying it up. Again, it was, we're talking seven fifty a week back all that time, and some won't go more than that. Where now it, it's it's crackers what players are on playing like championship level. So like seven fifty a week, but they would give like twenty grand sign on fees a year, which was mint. Mm. You know what I mean, that, that again. So you moved, and you you get your coin. So we did the deal with Port Vale. Drove home. Mrs. walks in, buzzing. Look at this. What I found us four bedroom just outside and all this and that I says I'm not going there we're off to Port Vale <laughs> sitting what are you about I says where's Port Vale I says fuck knows it's two hours <laughs> south <laughs> compared to going up that way <laughs> so I had no mobile phone about to 25 ringer. minutes <laughs> <laughs> I had no mobile phone to ring to tell her where I was signed but she was fine so just before about three months before leaving Hull I'd gone for Edward played Newcastle landed and I had this pop in my knee and it was like you know that's not right. Then I went to get it scanned and I'd snapped my ACL just in the end of the season. So they said, when I was under anaesthetic, said, we've moved, do not movement. He said, it is solid. This is where some can get away with it, some can't. It's what sometimes it will later in my career, I did it again and he could move it, he can, he could no way run on it. But he said, you can either build your hamstrings and your, your quads up and try and get away with it, or you can have the ACL where you be out for over 12 months. So I thought, I can't have that. I wasn't looking. I'll try it. So you used to go and train every morning, build on the weights, get it built up. And I played after two months, even though I had no ACL. But it, like I said, it had attached itself somewhere else, which it didn't get caused me no problems, really. And then when the move came up, I thought, shit, I've got to pass a medical here. But as I was leaving all they'd give me, they had, no computer, they'd have computers, but they'd give me all the forms and all the, the scans and the x-ray and the files. So you need to take them and give them to the, the physio when you get there. So I, fair enough, so I'm driving down M62 and I was really posh at that time because I'd gone up class. I'd gone to an Astra GTE. <laughs> which <laughs> fucking hell, they're in 15 eight. minutes. No, it had electric windows on both sides. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> for this fucking trip. So I'm driving along, I thought, if the physio sees my knee, no ACL, I'm not signing for Port Vale. And they were paying 300 grand, so it would big bucks again. So they're not signing me. So I'm driving, so I'm looking through. Gets it right knee, but right knee up. X ray, doesn't drive up. Window down. <laughs> <laughs> Five mile further down the road. Another one. <laughs> but that's six of them in the right knee. <laughs> so that didn't happen. Another, realistically, <laughs> if you're the Dutch physio, they're not going to sign me, are they? We're going to waste So I get there. Destroy the evidence. The, pass all the stuff over to physio. <laughs> goes through everything. Um, sort of the deal out. So I need to go to doctor for for some scans and whatever so i'm oh, back in my mind it's going to fall through it's going to fall through so i get to see the doctor you know the records checks my ankle blah blah then he says oh, um they did mention that you had a problem with one of your knees wasn't it i says yeah he says which one was it oh, beautiful my left <laughs> <laughs> said, well, no problems we'll have a little look at it so x-rays scanned it come back nah, no problem that everything's fine fucking signed it <laughs> Didn't have no clue. It was up fucking M62. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> following the gut back there and finding the Swerving round x rays. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's he's walked in like a fucking uh, flick. Guys, it's all so great. <laughs> <laughs> but the three years there I had at Port Vale, probably my best three years for social, for fun, playing wise. Like I said, first year we got relegated, which you look back and it's little stories that come to you, which. I wish you hadn't really, because it's some of them like the best either. But when you signed for Port Vale, rather than putting you in a big, big hotel, they put us in like a guest house, like a big Victorian guest house. And Keith Houchin had just signed probably two or three weeks before. And I said, What's it like, Houchin? It's like, it's massive, it's all right. And a lad called Tim Parkin, centre half, he was at Wolves. He'd been living there two years. Anyway, we got to house. Nice house. Landlady and landlord, lovely people. But on night time, when you got your food, I'd always look at Tim's, who'd been there two years, and he'd, he'd have an extra chop or an extra <laughs> fucking sausage <laughs> or more fucking... Everything had come to apple pie and custard, and he'd like, I said, why has he always got fucking more than us? And I, in my head, I thought, I need, I'm going to do something about this. I said, what are you going to do? I said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking on top of me. I said, I'm going to scare him tonight. I'm going to crack in his bedroom. I'm going to fucking shit him up middle at night. I said, it's not his fault. I said, yeah, but he's benefiting. <laughs> so I, just, I said, what room's he in? 
So he told me which room is like a massive old house, must have been seven, eight bedrooms. So I had to tell him which room in. So we're all sitting watching telly at night. So imagine this now, I just look back and think I've just signed for 300 grand to a like, championship team or something. Fucking hell. But <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't seem right what I'm going to say. So everybody's packing up to go to bed. I shut off upstairs, go to bed out to tell us. And it's like, it was brilliant because I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going to hide until I get in. <laughs> So big old big fucking wardrobes, but it had them beds. Do you know what fucking metal beds where you could fill up pan underneath and you have a piss? I still do that. <laughs> and they're like fucking with springs and all that. I thought there it is. So I slid straight under bed. I thought, wait till he comes in, goes to sleep. I want to fucking creep out and fucking jump on him. Brilliant in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Laid there, looking to the right. Fucking where are they? Fucking ten minutes later, door opens. Fucking pair of fucking pink fucking slippers comes walking in. <laughs> Followed by some blue suede slippers. It sent me to a fucking landlord and level red. <laughs> <laughs> so record sign is laid under bed. <laughs> fucking pervy peak. <laughs> laid under fucking bed thinking of what I'm gonna do. <laughs> so you get into bed, they're having a little chat, side lights go out on. Main light go out. How the fuck do I get out of this? <laughs> Ouch, you must be pissing yourself in the fucking room, right? I had to wait until they'd gone to sleep. Obviously, I thought they'd gone to sleep. And then SAS, crawl out. Door's probably probably only about where that is there. But I just didn't even look back. They might have even been watching me. <laughs> and, back and then you put your hand up and where there's like a little little knob. To it and it was an old out, everything fucking creaked. I see me. They can see me, I know they're looking. They can go out, shut the door. I thought, I don't know if they see me or not, but I found out later, two years, two years ago, I went down to Port Vale and told the same story. And there was in fucking audience. Oh, they they? No, they didn't know. I'd done they it. didn't know. But imagine this spring if they had just started shagging. <laughs> <out there. laughs> and then, I, every opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you can't waste them. <laughs> how, would away, how would they get away with that? But imagine that happening now. Good crack from is it Houchin? Did you Keith say? Keith Houchin, yeah. Great crack, isn't that? Oh, we had a we had a funny one where. Do you remember Paul Kerr, Middlesbrough lad? He turns up for training once. His car had broke down. And he couldn't get in. So his next door neighbour used to run a wedding and funerals. So he turns up one day in his hearse. So he turned up with an army. I'm injured one day. So I turned this hearse and I'm thinking, what can I do with that? And the lads are going <laughs> on training. I'm going to nick his car. So what he's going to do? I says, I'm going to lay him back a bit. You drive it and we'll drive around Burzl, where Port Vale is. You can't do that. I went, fucking funny as fuck. <laughs> to who? <laughs> to me. <laughs> I mean, you're joking, so everyone's going out training. So I've gone with my training kit, my boots on, and I'm laying it back in this earth with my hands like <laughs> So I said, Ouchie, drive. I'm sure it was Ouchie. I'm, I'm nearly 100% sure. So drive slow. So if you go quicker <laughs> on the bend, I'm going out a fucking window. So normal people laying here in a box, and I'm, I'm not much stability here. So we're driving around, he's going right slow. He said, Swanny, look, I can't see what's going on, can I? He says, look to your right. So I'm there. Drop my head to the right. There was two old deers in this car at traffic lights. <laughs> and it's like... And I'm like, still staring at that. <laughs> <laughs> set off, to, lights turned, we set off. Going up early, went swanny. Lights had turned twice to green, and they're still sitting there. <laughs> two old deers. <laughs> and I'm thinking, it's wrong, isn't it? <laughs> In my funny head, I thought it was funny. <laughs> so, again, I've got away with that. <laughs> Did you get many bollockings and fines and stuff for, All for the time, yeah. practical jokes? Yeah, we had um, one of them. I'd been getting there again two, three weeks. I'd come in on the morning, walked in, and my towel every morning was wet and screwed up because you'll have everything set out for you. And I thought, who's doing that? And then I said, I kept forgot the boat's name. It's Chris. Who's fucking Chris? Oh, he said that he cleans lads' cars down. I said, and they give him a couple of tickets. And then he comes in as a sauna, because he was sauna in dress room, as a sauna, shower, and get yourself off. Yeah, I said, use my fucking towel all the time. So again, thinking, I need to get this come back. <laughs> <laughs> and the 75, 78. So what can I do? Where's he living? Four below. <laughs> so I come back from training early. First one in, receptions, pair of scissors, love for coming. Done the old school, cut his underpants underneath. Cut end of his socks off. Looked at my towel again. I thought, no, it's not enough. So I cut his leg 
half of his leg of his trousers off. Looked at the towel, cut arm of his jumper off. <laughs> Thought, that'll be enough anyway. He comes out, lads start coming in. He starts getting dressed, pulls his underpants on up to him. <laughs> he must think there's something wrong, so he pulls it down, doesn't know it. <clears throat> pulls his socks on, just kept coming up. <laughs> then he went, not having this, going to see the manager. So he puts his trousers on, and then lads have looked, oh, fucking Swanee, you've gone too far. <laughs> you've gone too far, so trousers, half the trousers missing. <laughs> As he's walking out, he puts his jumper on, then the lads start laughing because he's only got one eye. <laughs> Goes out to see Rudgy. Rudgy comes walking up, walks in straight in. Swanny, is this you? I went, yeah. He says, uh, look what you've done to him. I went, can you use my towel every fucking day, man? I said, what's all that about? Why can't you use somebody else's? I'll get your own. Bring your own. I don't even give him fucking, don't even wash my fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> so he went, right, that's all out of order. This is um, he's paying back. He said, but the big problem he's got, where's his fucking shoes that his wife fucking bought for their anniversary? So I looked up and I'd super glued them. I see them. <laughs> I looked up and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the, to, the, to the hand that got that off and to cut plastic board off, it cost me about 300 odd quid. <laughs> Repacked it, sealing up. And fucking poor block. I did. I did feel bad. To be fair. But, Even still, like using someone's towel, like, and then all your clothes are cut up. It's slightly out of proportion. To be fair, I'd, I'm just thinking it what, happen, what though, it? your thought process when you thought that's not enough. Yeah, I don't know. There why. needs to be more. Yeah, yeah. Use just the towel. anger <laughs> that why he just abuse me and why not everybody else that he. Gets the cars clean from. I know. I know how he feels though, because I'll put my hat on later. Me. <laughs> <laughs> what were you like, Rudgy? Because really? I had him at Stoke as a, a, a job, got a job at Stoke. Yeah, but he didn't manage you. Oh no. I think as a as a manager, um, I had my best three years under under John. Um, lovely bloke. Again, he he had a knife for talent, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he brought some great players in. And made good money for the club and he kept the club ticking over. So uh, what he did for that club, like saying they've got a statue and everything now, they're raising money for him, which he deserves. But yeah, he had an eye for talent, the way he used to play at three at the back, he had some quality players. And like I say, after this first year of getting relegated, <clears throat> the second year we got to the playoff final, which you probably want to talk about, won't you? And then third year we got promotion. But the players he brought in, it was a good bunch. He didn't have the... He struggled to handle me at times, possibly, which he says now it, I probably wasn't the easiest person to handle because of my mentality. And it was only fun mentality. I was not a nasty person. I wasn't causing trouble to nobody. I was just messing about all the time, pinching ladders if someone's up on the roof and moving people's cars and cutting people, driving around in a nurse, which we all do, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was just how my mind works, and it still does now. I'm always wanting to mess about. Bit, bit lads in here and with girls always wanting to have a bit of fun with them because I think put a smile on people's face it makes your life easier, doesn't it? So Unless it's that's what good men are like. <laughs> Unless you use your towel. Yeah. Unless you use your towel. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about Wembley though because you you went down in history only one of three. That's English. the second or third English one to get sent off, which yeah. is probably the lowest part of my career. To Yourself, be Kevin Keegan and Lee Dixon, is it? Yeah. Well, it, the build up to it a week before. To be fair, we had a. Um, we played an auto glass final, which is another funny story. So auto glass final against Stockport. Uh, so all, all your life as a kid, you want to play at Wembley, don't you? And I had an opportunity of playing twice in eight days with the auto glass final. But me and Archie got a bit excited because we'd been down to Plymouth the week before, met a couple of his mates. I said, oh, come pick us up before the game. We'll go for a couple of beers. So they come to pick us up. I went out to the local boozer, something to eat. Yeah, they didn't have a curfew because they expected you to be in bed, you know what I mean? So we stayed out till 11, 12 o'clock. I'd had a chat with one at Butler bloke who was running around. How do we get back in to rather than coming in the front door? So he gives a key for this spiral staircase and we get to the top, there's your key, you'd be fine. Cause me and Ouch, we got put in bridal suite for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, one bed as well. <laughs> so you're, this is the night before the Plymouth away game? No, night, no Plymouth a week before, right. think, or two weeks before. Come up, we'll have a couple of beers. So we were getting down now the night before. We'll be part of glass final on the Friday. We went out, had too much to drink, come back. We had a carrot of sherry in his room. Then there was a joining room. So we broke into theirs and I told we had two carrots of sherry. So we'd like carry on drinking, 
playing cards. His mates decided to come off. Looked at his watch. It's like half past five. Playing three o'clock next what, day. In the autoglass final, final at Wembley? Yeah. And you've gone out on the Friday night? We're, well, we're back in by 12. Oh, oh well, you're all right then. You're all in trouble then. <laughs> <laughs> you've only half gone out. I know. So, <laughs> comes back half past five and I said, I need to get some sleep now. She went, I'm all right. I'm not even playing. Didn't realise it. He wasn't playing. He'd just come down. Just kept you up. Squad. No. So, I tried to get my head down. So, wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Missed breakfast, missed the pre-match walk, missed the pre-match meal, going to the game. Lads knew, obviously, come on, like, I can't just stay with him. And I've seen a video of us getting on the bus, you know, they do videos for, for it. And everyone's getting on all smart with ties and everything. I walk with shirts like that, <laughs> jackets half hanging off, get up bus. Lads, this one, you stink. It absolutely stinks. So I pile them with my mints. I've also got, from where I am here, We've had arranged for a 52 seater bus for all family and friends to come down to see the son at Wembley and see my brother and his sisters are all there. So on the way to the ground, I can't remember getting to, to Wembley. I can't remember getting to the ground, can't remember getting into the dressing room. Has Rudgy picked up on this? Like, no. You've, you've managed to keep your distance. Yeah, the lads had just sorted it out. Yeah. So I get in the dressing room, Rudgy comes in, get his head out, lads, go, go sample the atmosphere. Walks out and you just imagine it's the hottest day of the year. And it's like at Wembley, no breeze, no nothing. Mm. I've walked out, stood in shade. I'm like, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through this? It's a big old pitch and all, in it? Massive, innit? <laughs> so I come back in, start getting dressed. And it's when you've done it when you're finished, when you're putting your boots on and you keep having to sit back up quick to know to focus. <laughs> so I'm fastening my boots. <laughs> I don't even know what, like, you know, presenting. Oh, you're going to meet somebody for, don't you? No idea what that was. Even looking back, I can't remember looking back at it. Anyway, so we kicked off. Ten minutes into the game, I've gone up for an header and both my calves have gone. <laughs> Fucking cramp. <laughs> Ten minutes, Wembley. <laughs> 52 <laughs> seater. 52 year old family there, <laughs> waving the flags and all that. Never saw it. Comes, physio comes running on and he's like, obviously I'm sweating. He can. He went, Fucking hell, someone who walks that. I went, Forget about that. Just treat my ankle. My calves are in cramp. And he's like, so what are you I went, forget about that. Just tell Rudgie, mate, I've got on my ankle. I'll, I'll get through it. So I goes off. I said no anyway. So every time there's a chance to stretch, I'm stretching, I'm stretching, I'm stretching. Because something else is going to go, something else is going to go. Anyway, get through to end the game. We end up winning 2-1. Man of the match. <laughs> 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 fucking honest. I've got the thing at home, the gold, fucking, it's like crystal ball. <laughs> Autoglass final, man of the match. <laughs> Big Pete, right? <laughs> <laughs> Following week. <laughs> fucking ouchie. We're playing West Brom. 72,000 there now. Went to bed at nine. Got up, had my breakfast. Went through our pre-match meal. Got to the game. Same bus come down. Waving to my family. <laughs> Loving it. Fresh as a daisy. Sucking it all oh, in. Oh, wow. It mint. I mean, waving to everybody. Part of it. After an hour into the game, get sent off, get beat fucking 3 now. <laughs> <laughs> So you tell me preparation for game. <laughs> Which is the best way to do it. Which is the best way to do it. Sports scientists can stick it with their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> did for me, got me at Mallet matches. So did the, uh, physio, did the physio not no, say out then? No. No. And the lads have done well for you as well, because they, they could have gone the other way. So none none of them we don't have them pissed off with you. There might have been at the time, but obviously I still performed, which I was yeah. completely wrong and I, I'm disgusted with myself for doing it. I'm not proud of it. And I only say it because like people have asked me about it and it's it's not the best part of your life you want to talk about and think I feel like it's exactly that you'd let people down. I felt even worse the second week when I got sent off. And that affects everybody plays contracts and if you get promotion. Mm. I did feel that week we got let down, but the bunch of lads we had at Vale at the time were mint. So I would come on the bus after they're getting beat 3 0. So I'm sat at the front because I felt like I'd let them all down. Paul Kirge puts a bottle of champagne. Next to me, he says, drink that, and get back to the back bus with lads. So they've all gone back at bus. I drunk it, went back, and we got Rudgy back with us. I said, look, if you stick with us next year, we will guarantee you promotion. We will get promotion if we stick together. And we're all like, yeah, we can do it, we'll do it, we can do it. So within 10 minutes then, we've got sunglasses on. We're doing madness up and down the bus. <laughs> Overtake it, West Brom fucking fans who were sitting there like. They're like, they've just been beaten. They're like, we knew we were going to get promoted. 
and it was that quick we just turned it and we did we got promoted year after the old squad stuck together stuck together like I say brought a couple of players in and like I say yeah. we got promoted gents quick break for our favourite headline sponsor my favourite ever Batmates bad we, day for us all wasn't it bad I'm, weekend I'm yeah. crap at it this really week terrible I'm crap really terrible but somebody come out on top and how much did they take home about 700 quid life changing Oof. Oh, how That's many leagues it. have we done six you, that, you I've been in the top job. 50 once I don't, oh, I don't know what I'm doing we're, we're back we're back with uh, predictions this, this week. is your bread and butter this win Saturday before. lose draw every Premier League game of a Saturday, Saturday Sunday and Sunday it's a few toughies by the way yeah Everton United Everton United Everton Arsenal tough one? This, yeah well m not as tough as Brentford Newcastle Ooh, at Brentford Newcastle. Villa Forest some tough ones yes, Leicester Bournemouth all 10 Premier League fixtures Saturday Sunday get your predictions in yeah Over Saturday the and Sunday they're, they're win right. lose draw then that you've just mentioned go out go any, any at three yeah. ways couldn't they so our, our league Premier League league you just download the Betmate app and you'll you'll find it the Saturday Sunday games Premier League games all ten, and uh, you just predict win lose or draw who's who's going to come out on top. And one of you will get my fiver. And it's just a fiver. <laughs> I'm going to win it. Winner takes the pot, and obviously you've got to be eighteen or over, and it's uh, low stakes as always throughout the app. It's only fiver max. <clears throat> so, so we're always gambling responsibly. So that's we? that's big reason why we're doing it. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah, please do gamble responsibly. So links in the description that you can uh, get directly through or just find the Betmate app in your uh, app store and get involved. thing is, you only need to win once, don't you? So I keep telling myself, just win once, and happy days. <clears throat> oh, and I nearly forgot, if you put UTC5 in when you sign up, you get £5 free. So if you've not taken part already, you can do it for now. Get your £5, oh, get involved. So you can try it for a week, yeah. free of charge. Oh, and you'll be coming back. You'll be going back. It is a very good app. Just need to get. Just need to match. Just need to know a little bit about football, don't you, John? Huh? Just need to know a little bit about football. Yeah, that does help, I think. So, was that a, a regular occurrence? And a couple of pints on a Friday night. From a young age, yeah, I used to have a bottle of red wine and a, and a chili. Um, I'd make the chili every Friday. Bottle of wine. That was my normal. It was your preparation? Full preparation. bottle. Yeah. But <laughs> the look of disgust there. Disgust. <laughs> Stupid. It was, like, it was like a drinks culture, innit? I wasn't pissed. It was yeah, just like yeah. something I used to have. It's only like three glasses of wine, innit? Just relax you, have a good night's sleep. You're ready to go next day. Never drunk up morning before a game. That'd be bad, wouldn't it? Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, do that. I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've not tried it. No. That was my regular occurrence every Friday. And were everybody in the same boat with that, you think, or? No, they weren't all in the same box. I remember in a hotel we were staying when Man United were there, and me and Ronnie Jepson said, we can't have the, the port coming up and down all the time, so we ordered six pints. So, knock on door, blow up on door. Alex Ferguson stood the room straight opposite us, and like, blokes to be six pints. <laughs> it's like, good night, mate, good night. Have a good night, lads. <laughs> I don't look professional, does it? <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> Have a good night, lads. I don't know if thought they're all for me, but we had three each, like, I can't remember when that. It just looked as if to say, fucking hell. Finished them, when we finished them, went and put them outside and looked in Beckham's room. I thought, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> See what y'all have to do in the morning. Put them outside his room. <laughs> it seems like you've had a good, you've enjoyed at every club you've played, been at so far. I have. I had a great time until. Probably what you're going to talk about now, yeah. Plymouth. Yeah. That'd Did probably, you want to go uh, to Plymouth? Like, yeah, want, how it came about? How come you were ready to leave Port Vale? End of the season were coming to an end at Port Vale and other players were getting offered contracts. My contract was coming up. But I think the manager wanted to wait and see what level, if they get promoted, they could offer better contracts, blah, 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 blah. And it didn't come to me. So I'd gone and said, why have you not? So I kicked up at the first saying, look, if you're not going to give me a contract now, I'll get off. I'll go in summer. When it came up, the chance of coming to a move after the Port Vale, again, the same sort of clubs come up, like Wolves came up, West Brom, Bristol City, Burnley came in. And then I said to Mrs. So I said, I'll probably go to Burnley, get back up north. It's only over at Pennines. I'll just... So I'd gone out with my mate in the darts match and the phone rang in pub because we didn't have mobiles at the time again. 
you need to come home. So I shut off home. She says, um, Peter Shetland's been on. He wants to sign. I went, who's he manager of? So I want, I'm not a football fucking buff like. I don't keep up to what's going on, even though we played in the same league. So what club's he at? She says, oh, he's at Plymouth. I went, fucking nice. I'm not going to Plymouth. It's fucking miles away. So I says, um, he needs to speak to you. So I rung him up. I says, um, what, what are you after? So I just wrote some figures down because I knew it coming to end of the contract, what I would want to go anywhere. And I just put an extra 10 grand a year on at Plymouth. I thought, they won't take that. So I told him it. So I said, leave, leave that with us. Next day, he says, yeah, we can, we can do that. I thought, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> we have to fucking go. I said, we're off to Plymouth. <laughs> <laughs> she went, where's that? I went, fucking far as you can go before you get wet. <laughs> so off we went. At that time, she, uh, Mrs. were pregnant with George. So like she's like seven, eight months pregnant. I said, well, when we get down there, we'll see what it's like. And it's a lovely place. That's a lovely place. And like, say, so we're looking for houses. And Schilt said to Peter Schilt and said, look, I'll come out. He says, there's an house next door to me. We'll rent this out for you. So I went down there, looked at this house, and big electric gates opened up, drove in. It's a fucking massive thing. Next door to Schilt, I thought, why does he want me near him? I don't want any players near him, do you? So I opened up and walked in. Honestly, it was. It was like you see the top players living in now. Indoor swimming pool, sauna, gymnasium. I'm like, wow, I'm saying to miss it. I'm, all I could think of, when the lads come down, this will be fucking mint. <laughs> so all I could think of, this will be fucking mint. Like, yeah. it? We're in here and no, nobody can make as much noise as you want. <laughs> Have a good crack. And I went, what do you think, love? She got in the car, she went, that's not an house. It's too big, we need something smaller. So we end up finding... This other, just on a normal street, with it. it had a massive garden, like, but I wanted to go in there for a party with lads. <laughs> <laughs> she won't do it. So I ended up having to, we ended up signing, but it was brilliant because we'd gone down there. I took my dad down. My dad didn't normally come. So again, I was my own agent. So I've gone down there and what I told him I wanted over, over two years. So they had a, a press conference. So I thought, everything's there paper, media, fucking live thing. So I was sitting on doing the contract with Dan McCauley, it was, and Peter Shilton, Dan McCauley were owner. So I was about to sign the contracts, like live on telly. And I looked and I thought, this is the, it's over three years. And so I said to Shilton, went, Gaffer, I says, this is over three years, I want it over two. Oh, I said, just get it signed and we'll sort it after. And I went, no. Nah. So I put the pen down. <laughs> no. <laughs> all clickers there. Yeah. I went, no. I went, What's the problem? We've got a problem. I says, yeah, yeah. I says, the contract you've got down to chairman. I says, that's what I asked for. The money I asked for was over two years, not three years. So I said, no, you've got the wrong contract. So I sat back and I says, well, just sign it. I went, no, I'm not signing it. No chance. So they had to shuffle off. And he probably agreed it on, probably, Shields might have said to him, it's over three years. At that time, then they had to give it over two years. So I just checked the dates, make sure the money was the same that I would ask for. I signed it, so I think I had them by the balls then. They gave me probably forty grand more than they should have done. So signed the contract. And the pressure that is, relatively with all yeah, cameras the there and everything, and you're going whispers, whispers. Sign it. Sign it. Not sign it. Not sign it. Not signed it. <laughs> would you do the same? Uh, fucking right, I would. But no, nowadays an agent had checked it when yeah. they have one. Yeah. I just had my dad who didn't know nothing about football or all. It was just my dad. It's basically, it's another year of your life, isn't it? We could have been some weird. <laughs> that you didn't want to be exactly, and I'll end down a steady year. But on big money, though, could you not? Were you not thinking I'm getting another year? No, because they, 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 they spread it out spread over, it over right. three, years. three years. I think the sign on fees were from like 70 grand, it was, and then the wages were somewhere like they're only, again, they're only like 700 quid, something like that, seven, eight hundred. I can't remember exact figures, but it was big money from where it had left. It, it was a sign on fee with a big bulk of the money, like yeah. 70 grand, 235, something like that, which. Because you come out about 21 grand, 22 grand. For me, I'm a millionaire because I've been brought up in council estate, so it, it was great. So, as soon as time, my missus come down, moved into the house, and it was like, things started happening straight away when you come down. You know, you're thinking, I've dropped a bollock here. I've dropped a fucking bollock here. Started playing, the first game, friendly was against Coventry. I've run out, they give me the captaincy which was the worst thing they could have done because they took it off Steve Castle, who was their main man down there. And what happened was, when I was at the Port of Air, we nipped, we pinched 
by, I think, about a point or something about Plymouth to race to get automatic promotion. And in one of them games or something, the show, they kept showing a clip of me clearing the ball off the line against Plymouth. We've gone down right, crossed it, we scored. We got the three points. So we they kept showing this clip. If it hadn't been for the player we signed in, we'd have got promotion. Mm -hmm. So I looked at that and thought, that could be a big part of it. So the Coventry game come out when they announced my name. Fuck it, I was again gone for 300 or 350 grand. They fucking booed me. <laughs> First fucking game, pre season. <laughs> we like, I'm like, wait until you see his fucking player. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the messages. I love the well, we've got, but I'll talk about the messages after. So, God, I thought, what the fucking boy? And I was right, with people spitting at me. So, I've not even played. I got man of the match in the game again. Not again, because I didn't get many, but I got man of the match. I've done what I've done well. Come off. And look, the fans fucking hated me and took to me one bit. The players was all like clicky, like they had the London base lot. Then, like Paul Dalton up north, Pat Patterson, Ed Worthy, they was okay, but they wouldn't have nothing to do with me. It was like, because I'd say after one of these games, pre season games, oh, we're going out for a beer. No, we don't go out for beers. So I went out by my son, walked into a pub, the six of them stood by the set, stood together. So, wankers. I mean, when you go somewhere, I'm one that like puts my arm around her, come on. Come join us. Yeah. No. That's when you move so far. Yeah. So you'd expect a bit of fucking... No, we had none of that. So when we moved in, my next door neighbour looked out of the window and they had a big fucking massive outdoor swimming pool. So my mates said, um, we'll bring your stuff down this weekend. Says, yeah, come down. So we'll have a couple of nights out. So the lads come down, unpacked all the stuff, put it in the rooms. So what we up to? So it was red hot. And so I went... They've got a fucking swimming pool next door. I said, they're not in. I went, you can't just fucking go use it. I went, they're not in. Who's going to fucking know? <laughs> it's like on the back fucking gap. No one's looks over it. It's only back from me. So we've gone around, fucking took us on a little shitty barbecue. <laughs> so fucking boiled round. So all my mates, there's five of my mates on, on fucking sun lounges. <laughs> <laughs> Playing fucking volleyball in the pool. Three, four hours fucking barbecue on. All of a sudden, a bloke appears at the gate. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, your neighbour mate, just go out and say hello. <laughs> no, Probably man, pool. Just it, <laughs> we we just go out and say hello. <laughs> oh, man, he took it brilliant to this bloke. And he probably only won a realist. But there's even another bloke I spoke to when I was down there. There's two blokes I spoke to. Bill, top man, took it. He went, that's something I do, you know. And he, imagine if it hadn't it gone the other way. Yeah. So he was okay. So, But the house he was in, he'd be laid there all night, fucking, you know, noises, the telly come on and fucking... Things I thought, have you turned the telly off? It, yeah. So if we can go downstairs, we can tell it on. So we had an electrician come to get this electrician. Could he take his wire and something wrong with it? Then you'd hear noises, you'd fucking hear things smashing. And it was just like, something's not right. And I'd tell him, built next door. I said, look, something's not right here. I said, it's all so and so. My missus mate's a medium. I went, I prefer a small to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> she says, uh, so I'll come round. I'll get to come round. So when she come, I opened the door and she stood there and she went, Oh, fucking hell. There's somebody here. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, she's haunted. <laughs> they said, well, I said, well, there's somebody here. So she come in and she walk in that house and it's like, this don't feel right. And then I say, we had a great day and a different great day and we had a great day and we used to sleep on bed with us every night. As soon as George was born, put him in his room. <clears throat> they would not leave George's side. He stayed outside his room every night. Would not shout. If shouted at him, he would not move. So this woman did a research on people. So I said, I found out that a little girl had died in the house. I said, Can do you know which room? We said, Yeah, the room just at the top of the stairs where we'd put George in. So I said to Mrs. and the fucking, this is too much going on here. But it was like one, just a one off. It was regular, and I'm not into that. No way. If you tell me now, nice, like, if I never come across it, I'd say you're talking bollocks. Don't believe it. But I had to believe it because it, it was happening in my house. So I said to Mrs. Look, you'd have to fucking think of taking George back up north. We're not having this fucking things going on. So then I had to go to where uh, we're playing somewhere home, but dog went well. So I rung back, need to get him to back straight away. They're going to put it on the drip and look after it overnight. Fine. Played in the game, 20 minutes for the end of the game. Gone up for an header. Lads come, elbowed me. I thought, fucking, you know, you know, that's not right. That feels. As soon as I touched it, I could put my finger in my face. I thought, 
physio comes on. Fucking, don't think he had his first aid. Fucking badge, never mind a physio. <laughs> I says, I thought I smashed my face. Now he looks feeling everything's fine. I thought it don't feel right. My head felt like it caved in this side. And like twenty minutes left, so he says, ref said you all right. I went, yeah, I'll, I'll play on. So I played to end the game. Game's finished, and I can't see my eyes just closed. So I've come off. Doctor thought I'd best get to hospital. Took me to hospital, and I smashed my cheekbone in three places. So they had to drain it, operate overnight. I'm in hospital, I'm in operation. Dogs in fucking vets, living in a fucking haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> so, wake up in the morning after my operation. They ring me, phone rings. Come and pick um, Z up, he's fine. Ready to take him home, bring her up. Can someone go pick, can your dad go pick dog up? Vets is fine, yeah, brilliant. An hour later, phone rings. She's in tears, what? Dog's dead. What? Dog's collapsed, walked home, just fucking dropped dead. And people say to me, like, what happened to Plymouth? Why do you like Plymouth? So fucking vets killed my dog with fucking living in a haunted fucking house. <laughs> fucking players don't like me. And fucking, what more do you want to fucking go right for you or go wrong for you? Hell. What more do we need to know about Plymouth? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's getting better. This is probably three months in this. <laughs> is it? I've, got, I've got a two year contract. Could have had three. <laughs> you get rid of ghost. Uh, so I moved out. No, there's another one. So I'm in house one afternoon. She's gone up north. So just leave me to it. So all I was left was a bed. So I left myself a bed in house. So afternoon, come on from train. I thought I'm off to the pub. So I went upstairs to get in the shower. There was a softball. Do you know when you've got kids and they put them in them little nets in bathrooms, you know, just to keep them occupied. So it's even though it was only fucking two, three, yeah. she had all this ready for when he grew up. That sponge ball at the top of the stairs. So I managed to keep up twice and flick it. <laughs> And the picture, there's a picture on the wall up there, you'll see of my dog. There's a picture there, and I hit that picture. And as I hit the picture, it had smashed downstairs. I thought someone's put my window through. It was that bad. So I fucking had a towel on, fucking stripped up downstairs, run to the front room. And we had got a Royal Dalton figurine of a Great Dane, the exact same as that. And it was smashed in front room carpet, pieces, legs, tail, all over head, as if someone had just smashed it. And again, I'm not into things like that, yeah. this, what stuff that was happening. So one up player, as I won't mention his name, he said, he's coming down, I says, I don't know if it's his missus were coming down. It might have been his missus. I said, look, don't book into an hotel. I've, I've house. All you need is a bed for night. But he says, uh, that's fine. Cheers for anything. So I went home, giving keys. So he said, I went out at night. So I left everything in darkness. He says, come back after his meal. We'll come in. Telly was on. Hot lights was on. And I just said to missus, stay in car. We're not staying here. So he went in the house, took her clothes out of wardrobe and went to book in the hotel. They won't stay in the house. So it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it went, went landlord and landlady from that b and I think in wardrobe, uh, I, I went to me remote, I'll get the fuck on back. I think I think I'm I think I'm putting up with me for pool next door. You know what I mean? Just wearing swimming around his pool, barbecues and stuff. <laughs> at, least you, at least your football was all right. You're getting on well with the managers and Oh no, man. Peter Shilton, people ask me what he was like. He's a legend, we all know what Peter Shilton's done in the game, what he was like as a manager, and to be honest, he was fucking useless. When I was there, and the three months I had with him, probably, he can't have been that bad the year before, because he got him to a point away from getting promoted, so something must have happened. But I'd go and knock on his door and walk in, and he'd be like, fluster of all the papers and all fucking racing post and all that, rather than then he'd, he'd move them all, then he'd have shoot at match underneath, and they're looking at <laughs> <laughs> Why are you not doing tactics and you go out warm up and everything would be around goalkeepers throwing and catching them, I think. Then as we were getting the sack, I'd gone to one of the, uh, like, you know, like calendar we have up here on the local news people. I said, look, I've got an exclusive for you. This is like three months after being there. Got an, because players hated me. Fans fucking hated me. Everything seemed to be going wrong. I sent my missus back up north. I said, I've got an exclusive for you. Come round. We can do for you five, six o'clock, a piece, whatever. Brilliant, what is it? But if you get there, I'll give you questions to ask me. Just fire away. So I'd set them all up for one question. So they're asking me about why, about, um, are you enjoying it here? No, how's your football doing? No, I'm not enjoying that, not black. The last question is, uh, Pete, can I ask you, why did you come to Plymouth? I went for the money. Uh, Blunt as that, I said, yeah, I said, and Port of Earl have tried buying me back a couple of weeks back. Um, and if I could go, I said, I'd walk back. I'd set off now. Might take me four weeks, but I'd walk back. <laughs> and it was like, brilliant. So that went in the news. I went in 
train next day, and I think Russell, not Russell Osmond, but later one, Steve McCall. Steve, Steve McCall. He took over and he went, no point in coming, you might as well fuck off for a couple of days after what you've been said. So, perfect, suits me. So, I get me sent off and go on back up to Stokes. We met me house back up in Stoke. So you did like, hate it, didn't you? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm only halfway through this. Get loads more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why the, why the lads were still off with you. Off. I don't understand. The big thing was they took the captaincy off their main leader, which when you look back, it was wrong, because Steve Castle was their main man, and he was a driving force. He was the captain, so when they give me the captaincy, he came out last. The lads all kept the distance from me. Even when we were playing, like, we'd do set pieces, and like before I got up for the corner, they'd already take the corner. They took the corner, I think it was like, I've been crew or Walsall. I remember keeper with Trevor Wood, who used to be at Port Vale with. They took the corner, and I was still coming up. Ball would come out to me, and I was fuming. Like, as it comes to me, I smashed it on the half folly, straight in top corner. So it was like, up yours. So as I'm running back, one of the lads come jump on my back. So I've just just elbowed him out, and I've just gone to the middle of the pitch and given one of them to <laughs> So all fans of today, fuck off. <laughs> and that was early. <laughs> the best part of it, first game, come out, I was on walking in. Get out of my car, come in. First time Bookies was in the grounds. Says, Pete, come have a picture. New signing at the Bookies. Says, yeah, what price am I? Just got first goal. Said, 20 to 1. So I put 20 quid on. 20 quid. 20 to 1. Put in my pocket. Got out, kicked off. Corner. Comes in. Not got there yet. Fucking, as it's coming, someone's shot. Hit my leg. Fucking flies in bottom corner. 400 quid to Big Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> got beat 5 1. <laughs> right? And I'll tell you this now I got promotion with Port Vale, which was mint. I got relegated with Plymouth, and I got more satisfaction <laughs> by getting relegated with Plymouth than I did with Port Vale. That's how much I respect or disrespect what happened. Because they treat me like that. Yeah. yeah. It's not that I'm, I think I'm a nice bloke, but people listening to this will say, of what you're saying, you're not, and you're drinking, that's unprofessional. Yeah, I understand all that, but as a person, you get to know me, I'd do up for people. Go back to the Gary Speed scenario, I'd do up to look after people, and when they come to the club, I'd take them out, look after them, do up for them. But at the time they had down there with me in training, they won't speak to you. It was like Christmas do. I, thought, I said to Oddie, I went, I can't go on Christmas do. He said, Why? Well, I said, Well, They'll kick off. I went, well, I've got to show my face. I'm captain. And they're all gone out on a, in bad taste gear. So I've gone out to this boozer that we're in. I walked in the Oji who didn't drink anyway. He was driving. So I stood at the bar. And Kevin Nugent walks past. They haven't said hello to me at all. The pub's packed. So Kevin Nugent walked past. So I said, Kev. So I went to like, grab him. He's caught his shirt. And as I caught him, a button like, popped off. He's, so he's turned around and grabbed my grabbed me I think well what are you doing I said, I'm, I'm in my normal gear I've just come out to say hello really and just buy him all a drink and he's grabbed me and he wouldn't let go and I'm like Kev let go yours it's like a shit shirt he probably paid a quid and got it for no so I'm like but you could see he would not let go I thought what do I do in this situation I'm in a pack pub I've got a fucking bloke holding me I thought in my head that's only one way out so I said look you got to get off so I went to push him away as he pushed him away his heads come together and obviously, I headbutted him. <laughs> I had to release that. So, as soon as the contact was made, fuck you now. Everybody. Okay, Corral. Oh, they're waiting for it to happen on that. All team. So, sort of like, like backing off, backing in car park. All team. Onto you? Yeah. They're all like fucking wanting to have the same throwing. It was like, it was mint. If you'd have videoed that, it would have been funny. So, I was <laughs> doing a Michael together. Jackson on the way out. But I couldn't get him off. And then next day we're going to training. So I've gone straight in and said, look, Kevin, I need to have a chat with you. Just said, look, apologies for the other day, but it's all in drink for yourself as such. And it was never nicey, nicey. It was just from then it was after. I'm just trying to picture the, the captain of the football club and the rest of the team in the car park went into fucking chin you. That's exactly what it you was. You must have felt horrific, though. Like It changed me. And it, I became a man from the, for that year. To, from then on it just made me because I was on my own and the scary thing about it the, the people that vote and say you're the worst of signing I fucking love all that <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have been worse for them but I couldn't be 
But when they did a vote at the end of the season, I come third in the player that year. And that's how shite I was. <laughs> but I had to carry on playing because I'm self employed at the end of the day. I thought, if I toss it off, I'm never going to get away from here. Move. So I ended up getting a, a 200 grand move to Burnley in end. So he just looked back and thinking, it wasn't all me, even though everything that went on. But there's, that's just touching on base of a lot of stuff. Like we had my car slashed. Uh, my missus got rammed off road because I had a, a club car with my name on. <clears throat> the window screens got smashed. Fucking Rosset rammed off the road. Um, what else has happened down there? You got one there that you can remember? No, just the uh, Neil Warnock situation. Oh, that was that, that just fucking icing on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> what a bell end, isn't it? <laughs> I, I listened to this and I can't believe. How many people like him? I've had him twice as a manager. Never played a game for him. Never played one game. Um, I so think he comes in at Plymouth. Had you had dealing with with him before? You've never played under him, but has there anything gone on? I think some did go on, yeah. But <laughs> you, when I was playing for Hull against Notts County, um, an incident at the end of the game, Warnock's on the pitch, outside of the pitch, shouted on to break somebody's leg which you were known for doing that back then. Don't know if he did it later in his life. But he shouted on, and Lee Palin looked at me, who was the player, he said it to which was Lee Palin was my midfield player. And after the game, Lee Palin sprinted after him. So I've <laughs> run after Lee thinking, what's going to happen here? So as he gets in the tunnel, Lee and Warnock's having a bit of a to-do, and I went, look, it's not worth it, mate. So I'm trying to pull Lee off. But then he, Warnock was smart me what he was saying and things. So I said, look, Get off him. And something happened. This is where I had uh, something went. I lost me, my thoughts for a bit. So I went into the dressing room. Standard manager at the time, he come in. Next thing you know, police have come in. So when you've left Neil Warnock, not mentioning what happened, when you've left know, Neil Warnock, he, he's blanked. on his ass. I believe, I believe he might have been. Yes. I never looked back. I, didn't, I don't look back yeah, at life. Don't know he, he so <laughs> whether he was there, stood there, I don't know what happened, but... Police came into a restaurant. <laughs> What's wrong with him? Police came, in, police came into a restaurant one of our players. And Stan said, look, if you're arresting one of our players, take him, I've got a job to do. And he said, the policeman didn't know, no, the two of them, they said, well, they know it is. So they're looking round. They're like, look, if you don't know it is, get his hand out. So the two coppers went. So that's... No evidence. No evidence. Because I, I say I had a blank. I don't know if Lee's might have a different story to it. Mr. Warnock might have a different story to it, but for me, everything went blank. <laughs> and then he became a manager at Plymouth. <laughs> right? Are they, are they, I think I'm not. I'm no fucking Hercule Poirot <laughs> myself, but I've half an idea. No, I'm a different sort of person, character. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the heads coming together. I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know what happened. It might not have happened. It might be in the mind. You know. <coughs> Twenty eight. So end of the season, they've got relegated. So I'm buzzing. <laughs> two days, two to two three weeks before end of the season, I'm thinking this is dragging out. They're relegated, and we played Birmingham. I thought I'm going to get last two weeks off here. So I went and tackled that Kevin Francis round his waist. <laughs> Red card. So seven days, two last two weeks. I don't have to come in. Sort of thing. I'm going to find for anywhere. So I caught him second half and I run from far side, straight out tunnel, straight in, grabbed my dress, grabbed all my clothes, straight into my car, set off back up motorway. I've got my kit my boots still on, driving up motorway, listening to the game that I would been playing in five minutes ago and just set off to start with 20, 25 minutes left at game. I thought he can ring me if he wants me after because Russell Osman was in charge. So I said, I'll leave it to him to ring me if he needs me. And then... He didn't bother ringing me first, but get me a fake cup tickets and get me him either. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Because you I said before about the last couple of weeks when you you crack your eye open and Stan said, "Oh, will you play the like." You know how much you love football, what yeah. you do for yeah. managers, but your head must have just been got to completely be, to, gone. Do, to do something like that. You've got to be done, aren't you? Completely yeah. done with. This I, I was close to walking away from it. Then I'd, that many times where I'd sit by myself and thinking, "No, you can beat this," because I was literally on my own, and it was so. Used to drink a bit more than afternoons, but I thought, no, you need to get your head together here because you need to play well to get out of here. So that's why I knuckled down with my games. I didn't give a shit about what the results were. I just wanted to, I was like playing for myself. 
Yeah. That's it. One of the games, Andy come in, centre half, six foot three. He was getting battered all the time. He just wanted to, next time there's a goal kick, can you come and play on my side? And went, Ed, I went, fuck off, get on with it. Do your own thing. I'm not looking after myself. So that's what I ended up doing, to be fair, in the end. So when they got relegated, I'm thinking, how do I get out of here? I've got a year left now of this. And then Warnock came in. <laughs> I thought, brilliant. So we had to go down. I can't remember what he said to me. But he took my club car straight off me. That would took off me straight away. So I bought a bike to go into training, pedal bike, which is fucking funny. To him training on my pedal bike. <laughs> He's trying to bring all these players in, like Little John's, I think Ronnie Moore's might have been there, Kevin Blackwell, bringing all his coronies in that snow's hung around him and some out of his ass for all that time. I'm not saying that these players did, but he had them sort of people that... His click. Yeah, his click. Saying hanging out of his ass is the wrong thing, isn't it? Mm. Probably higher up than that, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time... It's like, I needed to get out of there. How am I going to get out? He wanted me to play. I said, look, too much has gone on here. Trying to explain it. You need to sell me, get rid of me. So they still owed me 35 grand, which was the best bit. And they'd stopped paying me. They hadn't just stopped. They hadn't given me, tramp, me sign-on fee. They just stopped paying me wages as well. So like three weeks, they hadn't paid me sign-on fee and my wage. So I rung Vince. Okay, this is what I can do. This is um, Rick PFA. So they've got, got an embargo on the club. Now, the power is in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I've got worn up by his bollocks because he's trying to bring all these players in, all these trialists in, trying to make things happen and all that. But unless you pay me, not know what's going to happen. So how come they stopped paying you? Like, what, was there a conversation? What, no idea. No, it just stopped. No wages. So I've gone and said, why I'm not being paid? Don't know about it. I've got to see so-and-so down to chairman or whatever. No idea, mm. just stopped paying me. So all these trialists, and we had a trial game, obviously I'm, I'm playing at reserve team. I remember chipping Kevin Blackwell from halfway line. I got him for a tackle to smash somebody, and he moved. So the force of the shot went over Kevin Blackwell, who's come on trial, and I've chipped him. Got shirts off. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fucking keeper? What the fuck's this from signing? <laughs> running around pitch as I've kicked off, and I'm still running around pitch. <laughs> and carried on. Then I'm booting little John into Fucking trees at side and fucking, but just causing absolute fucking havoc. Thought, well, he's got to fucking pay me or I'll get rid of me one or other. So, end of day, down to you. Then he comes and says, Right, I've got you a deal. Um, Burnley want you. So I thought, perfect. So, get yourself off to Burnley. I'm like, as if to say, fucking get out of here. So, up I go to Burnley, get on train, fly up to Burnley, have a chat with them. They says, Yeah, we'll give you wages I was on, plus we'll give you 20 grand sign on fees. Ring the um, Plymouth. Says so everything said, is everything sorted to one? I went, Yeah, I'm ready to sign. So I just need the money from yourself before I sign. Oh, no, you're not getting that. They're giving you that money. I went, No, you're giving me money to leave and I'm not signing for these until I get the money. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. I went, Well, I'm not fucking signing. So I put phone down, went back to my house in Stoke. Time I got there, phone had rang. Well, if you're not signing, you need to be down here at morning. We've got a pre season tour down further down the country, wherever they used to go all the time. So he says, um, when it was shot on players, you need to come down. So I went, fine. So I knew then I've got to do everything by the book. Yeah. She says, if I do what wrong there, I'm knackered. Mm. So I got down there, quarter to eight, or half past seven in the morning, was waiting for the bus, went and sat on the bus by myself, just sat there. All the players come on. Never said no, just walked back at the bus, walking past you as if I was fucking invisible. But I made sure that I was there with my bag, first one there. Took us to the first game. Because he was struggling with players. Um, picked his team and there was 15, I think there was 17 players. So he said, right, these are the room partners. He made a, made a point of it. These are the room partners. It's the um, rooms together. Met with the oh, there's an odd one, Swanny. But you don't like any of these players, do you? So I'll put you by yourself. He's like, all right. All right, so smarmy and sarcastic. So I didn't say no. Anyway, game kicks off. I just went. And because I've come third in the player at year award last year, the fans, some of them have took to us a bit, if you know what I mean, because I thought, he's it's he's given a go, to be fair. Mm. You know, they're not daft, are they? He's given it a go. So as the game's playing, this pre-season game, I just went and sat in stand and even sit on bench with fans. <laughs> so the game's going on, half-time to go in. I said to the fans, come on, we'll go have a kick about on pitch. Then Tanai comes, can you please get off the pitch? I'm pretending to the lad, no, you'll be fine, you and me, you're all right. <laughs> we're going berserk, because we've got all fans on pitch. How many? <laughs> Come out for second half. I go sit back up in stand. Mark Edworthy runs past and says, Swanee, this is um, you're playing second half. So I went, 
All right, so I'm sitting there, it's down with me, tracks up top on. Kicked off, and I'm one against saying out to me. Because he was like for about 10 yards in front. So I'm like, I am playing now. So I took it off, <laughs> give it to the lad, went and just run on pitch and started playing. Every time ball come to me, I turn round and smash it at Blackwell. <laughs> came, come for an header, and I'd go out, and I'd let it go and let the lad run through and have a chance on goal. <laughs> and it's like, substitute. Swanny, off you come. So I walked off, went, nah, I'm not coming off. Turn around, get an answer. No, oh, if you want me to come off, come and get me, I'm not coming off. So referee's like, well, what are we going to do? I'm not coming off. <laughs> so you have to stop, bitch, pick me up, take me off, but I'm not coming off. So they played the rest of the game and I was just causing bollocks. And it was like, they had a, they had a, <laughs> a when they had a the free kick, they had a, a saying, I can't remember what the saying was, that you can only do it once every night. Everybody runs out to play them all offside. I fucking shouted it in a brilliant. So the, the ball fucking run. I took two steps that way, played about eight of the ball on side. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fucking miss, they like. Yeah. Oh, it was like, fucking brilliant. I'm loving yeah. this. That's what I'm saying. So I had to make it in my favour. You know what I mean? The fun side of it. <laughs> so we're down there after that game. We've fucking gone on a night out. And again, curfews. You had to be back in on a curfew. So I would next year I was back in on curfew. So no hassle. Next day, there's a game. So like, there was Warner, Blackwell, other whatever the people around him. Now coming back into the hotel, I've just gone and sat in the middle of them while they're doing like the, the talking. You've got some set of bollocks on you. Oh, just sat in the middle of them with a the paper. Went to the bar, got an orange juice. Just thought not getting done. Blackwell's like, sorry, uh, you're back in your room. It's like half ten, eleven o'clock. So I can't read it perfectly. <laughs> and there's silence. So I you don't think you should, should be in your room. I went, only one person tell me to go to my room, that's my dad. My dad's not here. So I want to read paper. I'm not doing no harm to nobody. I'm, I don't want to go to my room yet. Just leave me alone. So it seemed for ages, but probably half an hour, 45 minutes, you just sat there reading or just staring at a paper just to piss them all off. I mean, half an hour, 45 minutes is a long time. Then someone, I mean, it'd be sat around yeah. the middle of some people. And someone comes in, I think it might, might have been Matty Heathcote or something like that. He was late. So I think one accepts something like this up for if someone's late, then it's like, let's show team spirit. Everybody, he's got a fine. Why don't you all play his fine? Put it in together, team bonding. Like, do that. So they all said, yeah, we'll do that. Black, I'm not paying. Fuck all. I'm not part of the team, I'm not part of the squad, I'm not paying no, oh, come on, Swanee, you need to do this. Like, shut up. From then on, it was like, we need to get him out. So while he was there, he said, Swanee, you need to get his side. So he said, well, come see me in the office in the morning. So it's in the morning to see him. I said, look, I says, um, you owe me 35 grand, I'm not going until you pay me 30. He said, well, I spoke to the chairman, they'll give you 15. He says, I'm not going until I get 35 grand. So he walks out, come back, he went, he's up to it, he'll give you 20. I went, what, you're not fucking listening? <laughs> What don't you fucking understand? <laughs> so I'm not going until you give me 35 fucking grand and I'll get out of your face and you can bring your players in that you want. You can sign them. So he goes again and it's gone for ages this time and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to take some here just to get out. He comes back with 30. Says, yeah, that'll do. I said, I've won, Anna. And he couldn't say no, so he went and get some signed. So I didn't say thank you. And then he sarcastically gives me this piece of paper in front of me with train times on to get back because I had no car out. I was still on my bike. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, just, just equalised there, aren't yeah. it? No, I'll go fucking two up in a minute. <laughs> so it gives me this piece of paper, there's your train times because I'm in a rush to get off, he says. So do all the paperwork, sign everything, come out. And I believe it was his missus that was sitting outside in car waiting to go. So I opened back door, threw my bag in. <laughs> Sat in front seat, let her cross. I says, all right, she runs to the station. Yeah, no problem. So she sets off. Does it look around like that? To the station. So it's like, yeah. That's two one swan in it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine you turning around and sh and, and shooting at your own goalkeeper in this game. Yeah, I'm doing everything, just booting it out, letting them run through. <laughs> what causing no harm to other team? It was just like. Just get rid of me. I didn't mess about it. I did mess about that, but for the fitness wise, I worked hard because I knew I'm not going to get fit mm. whether I'm going to be here or somewhere yeah. else. So I had to get fit, but to annoy him as much as I could, 
yeah, I don't know how much I could to get out of there. But eventually I did get the money and I went on to Burnley and in the went to Burnley, dressing room, sat down there and my head, I remember fastening my boots, not feeling fuzzy this time. I was looking at my feet and I could hear northern accents and it was just like a breath of fresh air. The weight seemed to Must lift be. and I looked up and just smiling at everybody. It's like, this is mint. I'm back home again. We've done, I don't know, 250 of these and that's the first you time like we've had it. a description of everything yeah. you've done to get out. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> You like a you no, like a stink kicker. No, to get out, yeah. That is, would you say that's top. That's that's up stink there, of that. the stinks. It makes it more impressive because normally when the players in dispute with a club, you've kind of got your other teammates as like allies, if you know yeah. what I mean. Like they'll be saying, oh, "What's happening?" and they'll be helping you out, and you've got them to lean on. But it sounds like you were <laughs> one on man run, run. Yeah. completely yeah. isolated. Yeah, but yeah, when Burnley was miles better. Just a relief to get up north and. The lads and the players and everybody about it, it was like, I'm back home here. And change again as a person? Yeah, I was miles better than as a person. But I look back at the Plymouth time and that made me. And it just, so much went on. And some of it was out of people's hands, but a lot of it was in their hands. The players, the fans, they could have all took to me. What, what's wrong with that? Could have at least tried. I think but the players are the one chance. that disappoints me. Yeah, so yeah that is the one that disappoints me. Because mm. like I say... When you know when you come to a new club, it's like you're a bit, not scared to go in, but it's like it's like starting school, isn't it? And you're like yeah. looking around, who's going to be? Someone's going to be sarcastic. Someone's going to take the piss. It seems you like wait for the first one to have a go at you, but there, <laughs> it's good because no one can support you. So, <laughs> the way you talk about it, it seems like there was a decision made before you'd even arrived. Possibly among the, t- I don't know. It sounds just like it's the captaincy thing, but that's not not your problem, is it? Not your fault. No. <laughs> so Stan gets potted, and him. No, this is sorry. This is this is them bury, isn't it? Oh no! So, so I went to see, went to Stan at Bury. Who was like, I said, look, you come and play for me, but you're playing as a centre forward. Fucking something like eight games in, I've scored six goals. I'm like, do you know, in purple when they're downside, I'm like second behind somewhere that I was. Stan pulls me, went, fucking else, want to? You've had some interest, a lot of interest. You keep on like this, I'm gonna lose you. I didn't score rest of the fucking season. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't fucking score. I got a penalty, I took a penalty and missed it. I couldn't score. <laughs> <laughs> fucking how strange is that? Just did, were, were it pressure or that? No. Or that or were it just, just weren't happening? Just weren't happening. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. So I, just, I couldn't score. I stand, but it was mint, absolutely mint playing as a striker for that, for that. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because it's just like a breath of fresh air. The pressure's off you. But saying that, then strikers need to score goals. The pressure's on strikers. Mm-hmm. But when it feels like you've come from a centre half, it may, if it don't work, you can always go to centre half. Yeah. You know what I mean, so while I'm scoring, it was like in different class. So I'll go, I'll go with it again. Stan gets potted or leaves. Yeah. And in comes Neil Warnock. Oh, fantastic, wasn't it? What more could I ask for? <laughs> what was the time period? Like obviously, Stan goes to Burnley, and then are you? No, Stan don't go to Burnley. End of the season, end of the Bury season. Stan takes us all away, so we got a lad's trip to Marbella somewhere. On the flight coming back, because don't forget he's bought me from Burnley to yeah. come to Bury. So on the plane coming back, he comes to sit next to us. This one, he says, um, "I've got an opportunity managing Burnley." He says, "What do you think?" But he lives in Burnley. I think he's a Burnley fan as well, so he's, he's a Burnley man, he's Stan. He said, what do you think, mate? He was scared of going in and all going past you. I went, Gaffy, you've, it's an opportunity you've got to take. So I said, but what I will say to you, if you go, you've got to take me back. Because the only reason I left Burnley, which is a great club, is to come play for you at Bury. Not like I said at the start, I'm playing for the manager, not the name above the door. Mm. I said, so I want to come. You have to take me back. He says, well, I'll see what I can do. I said, no, you've got to take me back, otherwise... <laughs> So we landed. <laughs> Just, uh, we're we're waiting again. <laughs> You've got to take me back, Stan. <laughs> yeah. So we landed. I, mean, I don't know how many days after it, he gets the Burnley job. So that was the World Cup year because I was down at the World Cup because Dave Batty got his tickets and went to the World Cup. And we're sitting with um, Gary Neville's dad. Is it Neville Neville? So we're sitting with all them. And Neville Neville wore, might have been secretary of Burnley at the time. And Don Robinson was like sitting in front of the chairman. And I remember him turning around and saying, Swanee, they've got your new manager when you get back. And I went, it's not, is it? He went, it is. 
I said, well, you might as well give me money now then. <laughs> might as well pay me up now. So I'm not playing for him. I said, yeah, no. I said, um, enjoy yourself. I'll see you when you get back. So when we get back, I went to see the chairman. I said, look, they opened me 10 grand. I said, you might as well give me 10 grand now and go. He says, I'm not going to play for him. I went, we'll see what he does when he comes in. So I'm sitting there, comes in the dressing room, comes around, shaking hands, talking to everybody. I'm sitting there with my hands crossed. Comes to me. I just went, just walked past me at next front. <laughs> Lad's like, what's happened there? So I had to tell him some of the stories, what happened. He just said to me, you might as well get off to Burnley. That's where you're going, Swanee. But he was just, oh, we had one pre-season game and I'd been out on the piss that afternoon because I wasn't in the squad. And they were playing Aberdeen and I was on the bench. They put me on the bench because the squad had gone up, you know, all printed out. So, like, Dean Weston, someone was injured. It might have been Lenny, John Rose. So, they're going out. It's going out for a beer with us. Yeah, I'm not in the squad. He must have got the, the fucking ear of it. And come, someone's come in and brought Swan up bottom. So, I'm back in and then the squad. I said, fuck that. I'm not, I won't be involved. So, I've gone on the piss all afternoon. Come in. Fucking shouts numbers out. I'm number fucking 16. So, I'm on bench. <laughs> <fucking> blind or <laughs> Playing Aberdeen is friendly. So. <laughs> so, I thought, I can't sit on bench because he smells it. He'll have my bollocks off, won't he? So, I, I kept sitting outside, and then near the end, probably about 15, 20 minutes left, he said something on the lines, get yourself up or get yourself up. Get yourself off you're coming on or something. Or get yourself off. You... So I can't fucking do that. So I run down to the corner flag, run past the corner flag, down into the tunnel, into the dressing room, picked my clothes, went to my car, threw my stuff in the car, had a track on, and we were staying in like a pub hotel down the road. I fucking sprinting to this pub because I could, I'd had a drink. I couldn't leave me. So I just fucked off. Next morning, come in, he's like, pull me straight in. Where was you? I told you you're coming on. I went, I thought you said, get, you're not coming on, get your head off. <laughs> I was just looking you off. Yeah. He said, said what? He said, I'm not, not, not going to be coming on, get your head off. So I was went, I was like, fucking Forrest Gump, running down to the pub. So I couldn't come on. Craig Ignat and I were playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Like, so I would. How long then after did you manage to get away? Because I went to see the chairman. I said, look, he's going to pay us up. And he was just laughing. Chairman was brilliant with Don Robinson. I've seen him a couple of times since. So you were a nightmare, weren't you? I went, no, he was a nightmare. I only like I was because of what, what's happened. And if you look back at the Plymouth, it wasn't Warnock's fault, really. He just come on the back end of it. No, yeah, you were having a nightmare before that. Yeah. He so just got the brunt of it. He was like, I just need to get out. Just dropped your wallet there, I think. Um, <laughs> It was one of them way thinking. He come at the wrong time and it didn't happen. And I just got myself the opportunity and he went, yeah, you can get yourself off. So I went, signed back for Burnley on a three. And then I did my cruise shit not long after that, to be fair. And then I was struggling. That's when I ended up going to going to York. Where I had Terry Dolan, which they said, don't knock people on the way up. She might need them on the way down. And Terry looked after me when he was at Hull. I always kept in touch with Terry and he, I had a, let's say I had a friendly for him to show how, how fit I was, and it was the worst I've ever played. And he went, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Fucking hell, I hope it's an improvement now. Got to have a decent contract. So he said, I'll give you a contract to end at season. This is at York. And then we come back from pre-season, and he just said to me, look, as long as you're fit, on Saturdays, I'm not bothered. So first pre-season game was against Man United. Oh, so his last pre-season game was against Man United. And then midfield that day, there was Beckham, Scholes, Keane and Giggs. That was the midfield for. And it was to do with one of our one of ex York players going to Man United. But before the game, I'd gone to warm up and the, the shorts they got me was like skin, skin tight. I thought, I can't play, I can't bend in these. And I put a bit of weight on in summer. I, <laughs> I wouldn't look a right cunt playing. So as I'm going out to warm up, I had this like long cagoule on to cover me. Ass. Cover me ass. I thought, in the meantime, I've got to send one of the kids to try to club shop to get the biggest shorts I've got. <laughs> So here you go. So I'm on pitch warming up and I've seen this fucking, you know, the mascot. It's like a big fucking Yorkie bear, whatever it is, with a big fucking head on that. So I said to him, <laughs> so I said, Oi, Yorkie, come over here, pal. So bloke comes over with a big fucking head like, <laughs> what I went, see them shorts you've got on there? Get in the dressing room, take them off and put them on my fucking peg. He's <laughs> like, what? I went, them fucking shorts. I need them on my fucking peg. He went, okay, Pete. So as he runs off, I've looked, I thought, fucking hell. I went, and by the way, cut the fucking tail off. 
So I come in, they actually put them on my peg with a foot mark you see, yeah. But luckily, lads have been to club shop and gone. <laughs> but yeah, that fucking game, they were fucking brilliant. You don't realise how good quality the players were. Yeah. They had a free kick deep, and Scholes comes up to us, and, like, and he's looking and looking and says, watch what we do here. He said, Beckham takes a free kick, he smashes it into me, I drop it off, flicks it around far post, and Giggs comes in for the volley. I went, fucking no chance, you've told me what I'm doing, I'm going to tell everybody. So I've told them all down the line what I'm going to do. Just about to take the free kick, Scholes looks at me, steps towards me, touches me. I put a step back. He turns in, Beckham smashes the ball in, he drops it. Fucking, I thought, no. Giggs comes around the back, fucking volleys over crossbar. I thought, they fucking told us what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to hit the target there, the one. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, like I say, I'd gone for a challenge with Beckham, which being a Leeds lad, I thought, it's my last game, probably this might not, might be Miller. I had a challenge and missed him, and he saw me come in. It was 60 40 in, in my favour. He saw me come in, stepped aside, and I bounced on ball. and He just said, If you want it, you can have it, mate. If you want it that much, I'm right, cunt. <laughs> so I'm coming out after the game, easy like a turnstile, waiting to get picked up. So he's not come out of the main entrance, and I've walked past, and I said, Excuse me, pal, you've come out. He went, Don't worry about it. He says, It's fine. Shook hands, give me mum and dad. Shook hands with my dad, give me my mug. And he got his boots out of his thing. He went to a George. He went, Hey, this one, you can have the boots. And George went, I don't want to give him a back because I'm a Leeds fan. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him a back and he took it on his juice instead. But it wouldn't worth a mint now, wouldn't it? Fair play to him, though. Fair play to him, yeah. Fair play. Were you glad when it comes to finishing with the injuries? And I know you said you were pain on the pain Yeah, the last and... game was against Chesterfield for York, and it was the first game of the season. And I knew my time would come to an end because I was just getting frustrated. I couldn't twist, I couldn't turn, I couldn't move. It was like, this is not good. And I got up for a corner, Steve Blatherwick's like nudging me and like pushing. I went, Blathers, come on. I played with him at Burn. I said, don't need that. And he did it again. And like, I'm Blathers, can you give us a rest, man? He did it again. I just turned and again, my head seems to glance ease. <laughs> <laughs> got the red card. Black time. In fact, John Burrisford had just turned up at the game to watch his and he just sat down and he saw him walking past. He was sitting with Billy and went, where's Pete going? And I saw he's gone off. So I'd just been sent off. And that's that's end of ah, the career, that's how I finished. No, no. I think Zeus is hungry, isn't it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's after my he's after my socks for dessert. Well, you look, look back at it all, fond memories, but obviously apart from the, the obvious Fond memories, loved my career, no regrets. I, things like what I used to do and what I've done. I I thought I was doing the right thing at the time, so I've no regrets. I've moved forward now. I've got my own care company, which is more rewarding than actually playing football, which I can only to say I'm in a better place now than I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> I've talked about this, man. <laughs> Go on, get down, bigger. <laughs> hey. Brilliant, mate. Yeah, top man. Thank, yeah, thank you for having it. You've been a nightmare, haven't you? Oh, dear. Well, top Cheers, man's funny. Cheers, man. Something to take him for a walk or all? <laughs> <That's the bastard. laughs> Cheers, mate. Appreciate Don't mind Cheers, you, mate. Brilliant. Is that all right? Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Still can't get over the Plymouth crap, man.